Oh, man, it's getting festive. Oh, hell yeah, it's, it is. It's starting to get festive. It's finally, it's, I feel like it's taken a lot longer this year to get cold in Texas. Yeah. Like, my air conditioning is still on today, and I'm going to leave that bitch at 60 and wear sweaters inside. <laughs> I don't care. Um, I agree. Because it's, it's, it's festive. It's the holidays are upon us. And so is the Rage Slack podcast. Oh. Right here on Rage Slack. I'm Jeff. I'm Amanda. Um, yes, it is time. We've got a full, we got all, I got a million tabs open in my Opera browser. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of stories and stuff. But um, before we do that, I think it's time for another edition. I don't know if you've ever been here for this, Amanda. I don't know if I have. Of Jeff bought something dumb off the internet. Oh, no, I've seen it in real life. Yes. But I've never witnessed it via podcast. Here, it's in podcast form this week. <laughs> it's full on. So, uh, uh, all right. So I've been having trouble ever since I became uh, older mm-hmm. um, sleeping. Mm-hmm. And a lot of sleep troubles. And I've, I've, I bought a lot of things. I need to just fucking buy a new mattress because yeah. my mattress but, sucks. So you're going to buy everything except that until yes. you pos- you have to? Yes. Yeah. I bought a body pillow. Mm-hmm. That didn't really work. I bought a $200 medical I pillow re- system. I know that one. I remember the conversations we had about that one. Yep. That didn't really work very yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was some garbage. I, have a, I had slept on it twice and it was so uncomfortable that like I, I kind of forced myself to fall asleep on it one time and it literally woke me up because it was so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. but last week uh or actually two weeks ago because it took forever to ship i bought because you know at this rate i'm just gonna buy everything the internet tells me to do um i got my rate i got my raycons (laughs) you know uh i got hello fresh for a while oh yeah i bought the pillow cube oh my god you know i know exactly what the pillow cube is assholes on the internet 80 dollar piece of memory (laughs) foam have you gotten it yet i have and how has it been i've slept on it for two nights uh-huh. so a little a little preamble here uh i had to change my sleeping habits to the point where i've got the pillow between my legs mm-hmm. and i'm like grabbing on a big pillow and then i got pillows under my head and uh that's working all right but i've been having a problem where like if i if the pillows under my head are like the wrong number of pillows or i move around too much yeah my neck gets cricked up and then yeah. i wake up with bad neck if i sleep my back my neck is fine but then my back's all jacked up because don't ever get old don't ever don't, get old don't want to get old uh so i got this dumb pillow cue yeah and i've been sleeping on it for two nights Mm -hmm. and it's the strangest (laughs) thing in the world because it is not comfortable to put my head on yeah but when i fall asleep it keeps my neck exactly where it's supposed to be wow so it's like so you're saying it might actually work my neck has felt better and I feel like I've slept and better. And your back feels okay. And my back like, is it's fine. Like, and you're not getting like, and but I now I'm sleeping in a weird position. And yeah. I've woken up the last two days, but I'm pretty sure that's because on the first day I ate Taco Bell, and on the second day I ate uh, uh, Culver's cheeseburger and cheese curds. That's... <laughs> Yeah. So that's on me. No amount of cubes is going to save you from that, Jeff. <laughs> that's right. No shape. Not a tetrahedron, not a pyramid. Nothing's going to yeah. save you from stuff and greasing your face right before no you go to sleep. No rhombus can protect you from a Taco Bell Chalupa Supreme. That's goddamn right. <laughs> well, um, yeah, that one's on me. That's a, Taco Bell's a story for another day. But here's the thing. It was $80. I got it on, a, uh, I think it was like, uh, not Black Friday. That's coming up. It was like Labor Day sale. Mm-hmm. But the, uh, if you ever bought anything mattress or blanket or pillow related, it's like, oh, it's our Friday sale. Yeah. Every don't ever buy anything at full price from a sleeping website that's Agreed. a rip off. Yeah. Um I don't know that it's entirely worth eighty dollars, but like it might be because I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I kind of need special equipment to sleep. Yeah. Like I can't just flop down. I love that you have to be um, put in essentially like a f- foam casing. Yes. Like you're an action figure. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a reverse unboxing video every night. <laughs> it's a boxing video <laughs> where I have to get. I, I'm, at, I'm at a point now. Well, the other night I was thinking, you know, it'd be really, really like, like uh, comfy would be if I got in position and then I put my body pillow behind me. Mm-hmm. Like I was nestled all together in pillows but i couldn't quite do it so I, i'm really close to the point where i'm gonna need a second person to just... i'm gonna need to get a girlfriend so that she can come <laughs> and and help me put myself together and it's like i don't want a spoon not that's, you that's gonna be not you the, just the pillows. that's gonna be on the tinder profile yes. of just like everyone's like looking for my soulmate looking for my significant other and you're like looking for somebody who will sandwich me betwixt two pillows i need to be <laughs> swaddled and i need like eight <laughs> pillows around
around me uh, b- before I can go to sleep. Yeah, that's yep. a real particular set of needs you're going for. Yeah, well... Hey, at least I I don't feel like I think this is one of the first times in a while where I've I've been like, hey, I I feel like the coffee did the trick and I'm rested. <laughs> yeah, I'm awake. you don't feel yeah. Um, so like, and, but the thing is that I cannot emphasize enough that when I go and put my head on this thing, it's really stiff. Like yeah. I can I can let you try it out at some point, but like it's super stiff. So like it's not like when you put your head on a pillow and your head like like goes into the pillow. Mm-hmm. It's like putting your head on a pillow and there's like a little bit of of give, but not much. It yeah. is made to keep your head horizontal with your fucking body. Yeah. So um, if you're looking for comfort, if you don't have like a medical need, or if you don't have like a, I have pain from my body being in the wrong position because yeah. humanity bites. Um, <laughs> being human sucks. It really does. I need um the they sell pillows that are like specifically for between your legs uh-huh. because uh the sleeping on my side it actually hurts my legs. Oh shit! Like it'll hurt my hip and my like knees uh-huh. because I'm an old person now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it'll happen but, to it, you yeah, seriously <laughs> but so it makes me really uncomfortable unless i have a pillow but i i don't like having too many pillows in the bed because it's like me john mm. our dog all of our dog's toys 16 just, pillows just not enough yeah i don't want a body pillow and a, like another pillow and whatever so like a, uh one of those little fucking thigh pillows is what i want okay it's literally on my christmas amazon wish list this year i was like i want a kettle and a pillow so i can sleep better I'm like, fuck. Uh, man, I'm not I used gonna, to ask for cool shit. I'm not going to say that you have to take anything, but I do have a surplus of pillows in this house now. <laughs> so you can take a look and you can take whatever pillow you please, want. Please, please uh, go through my pillow library. <laughs> all these unused contraptions. <laughs> no, that's even uh, better of, uh, like, with the girlfriend hunt, right? Because you're just like, a girl comes over and you're like, what do you, you want? What, what do you got? Do you like a pillow? What position I do you sleep to, on? I want you to be comfortable. The back, the stomach, <laughs> side. I got all configurations. Do you hang from the ceiling? I got some pillows for that. Do you sleep standing up? I got something that'll work for that. We can figure something can, out. Yeah, I got to go. I can just like put a bunch of pillows around you in a spiral and then it'll be fine. I'll put a rope around. Oh my God. What if they made a body pillow, but it was like a fucking snake, like a full, like long thing that you could coil around yourself? A sleeping bag? No. Well, no, not to be inside, <laughs> but like a body pillow. You know what I mean? But, just, but then it's just longer. Uh-huh. Like if I sewed four body pillows lengthwise, like you just long, and then you just it literally spiraled you. it around yourself. I think that'd be fine, except that like if you ever woke up and had to go to the bathroom, you would just, just be like, like ah! <laughs> I've been snared by an enemy, <laughs> my nemesis. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I wish. I mean, normally I'd uh, say like, ah, I've been watching this, but like last week we recorded the podcast really wake mm. really late, and so I watched Shang Chi last week, and then I talked about it. Yeah, and all I did after that was watch old Gundam episodes. Nobody wants to hear about fucking 1977 uh the anime episodes. select section in our Discord would be very interested in that. Yeah, so we'll go talk about it there. Uh, Fair enough. (laughs) So you got to be a part of Patreon if you want to hear Jeff talk about anime. That's right. Uh, What did you did you do anything last week? You watch Um, anything? Listen to anything? You buy any pillows? I didn't know. I'm trying to think. Everything's a blur. So this is my first day off of work, and this is my first week of uh after getting a promotion at my work congratulations thank you i hate it um (laughs) i work about 11 and a half to 12 hours every day and so it's all a blur like what did i do the week before who knows i fuck if i know i think i was alive during it um (laughs) and so like this is my first i got enough sleep that i'm like human okay and then i got this horrible starbucks drink yeah it's got cookie flavor right it's sugar cookie yeah it's not even a flavor that's just sugar yeah uh, yeah i just put sugar and flour in your coffee yeah it kind of tastes like that to be honest (laughs) it's not good i was like peppermint and they're like we're out of peppermint and i'm like you fucking suck Get me sugar cookie. So that should be against the law. Uh, right? Out of peppermint. Out of peppermint. Who's out of peppermint? All uh, these basic bitches going to get peppermint. I want peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Amanda walking out of the Starbucks. You go to the convenience store and buy a bunch of candy canes and bring them home and throw them in a food process. You're like, fuck, I got peppermint. I got if put you, peppermint in this fucking coffee. If you think I don't, the second candy canes come out, just grab a bunch of boxes of candy canes Uh because peppermint is my flavor like i i enjoy a pumpkin spice blah 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 during the like october months yeah but uh 
peppermint is my fucking holiday flavor. What are you? What are your thoughts about like the? big fuck off police baton uh candy canes like the ones that oh, are like, like those like a foot like, long yeah. and like a quarter inch thick um, uh, i'm not 100 percent sure who needs those and there's no good way to eat them yeah, right because you just 100 percent running down the sides suggestively <laughs> eating it and then if you do right yeah it's gonna become a point and then it's just a fucking weapon <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right? You wouldn't let that thing down to a shiv. Stab yeah. someone in the shower. Also, then I have to actively be like, yes, I suck this candy cane off into a shiv. And that's a <laughs> lot for somebody to handle. <laughs> Even for me. The implications are <laughs> horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. So, you know, I just <laughs> avoid it and go for the smaller ones. If you Okay, so if you're in a restaurant, mm-hmm. I just want to take a, a, a quick poll here. That's in it. a restaurant, you're, you're paying, right? Yeah. Apparently, it's the 80s in my mind. And there's like a thing full of like individually wrapped circle peppermints yeah. and a thing full of Andy's mints. What do you go Ooh, for there? Ooh, that depends. Yeah. I don't love chocolate. So Andy's mints are like right on the cusp of like what i will eat with chocolate yeah um because that mintiness is so good but that's like mint and peppermint yeah which are kind of different like a spearminty oh, versus I pepperminty see. okay I, ca- I really like peppermint though like okay. i genuinely like even mint chocolate chip is my favorite ice cream like nice. i i fucking live for that everyone that says they don't like mint and chocolate together yeah um can die in a fire <laughs> <laughs> like a york peppermint patty I do like you know, your peppermint of... patties, but not. I don't like seek them out. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, uh, during the holidays, Tootsie Rolls come out with a peppermint lollipop, so it's a peppermint candy with a Tootsie Pop center. Okay. Um, it, like but a, it's a lollipop instead of like a candy cane. Like a um uh like a Tootsie Roll pop, right? Yeah. But yeah with, except instead of that, like candy, like so, like grape. It's, it's mint. It's, it's mint. Peppermint. It's, it's a, like a candy cane that was melted around a Tootsie yeah, Pop, yeah. and it's my favorite. And I always look for it. And sometimes they sell it. Some years they don't, and I don't know. Yeah, you know, right. it's the luck of the Christmas for me. All right, but yeah, it's one of my favorites. Good to know. Everybody, write that down. Now you know what to get Amanda for Christmas. Just to oh, you dump have truck no full idea. I'd be so happy. <laughs> that would just make my day. Yeah. Um. Well. I wish that I could continue making your day, but it's time for the news. And uh, it's uh, I, I was really kind of hoping that we were going to be able that we were done yeah. with the horror news, the news I don't like to talk about, and it's very important. It's just that, like you know, this is a this is a YouTube channel with Dongocles, right? Like I don't know that this is not the the place for your most like hard hitting yeah. social commentaries, but like. This is the news, and uh, it must be discussed. It must, it must be discussed. So, let's get back to Activision. Oh, fuck. So, uh, this week the Wall Street Journal put out a I don't know people quote unquote bombshell bombshell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was all focused on Mr. Bobby Kotick. Uh, Bobby Kotick being the CEO of Activision slash Blizzard. Yeah. And this is a kind of a smorgasbord of things. But the main thing is that he sucks. Well, okay, he does suck. And I want to make it perfectly clear before I even go into this, that I I disliked Bobby Kotick before any of this shit happened. (laughs) Like, I am already predisposed to be like, fuck that guy. Like, if everything was fine, if there was. Yeah, Yeah, but he could. Yeah, but fuck that guy. Yeah. Like, he's taken Activision, a company that used to make video games that I like, and made it into a Call of Duty machine, and I fucking hate it. Like, yeah. Um, so, one of the things when all of these allegations were coming out at Blizzard was that, um, like, Kodak was very much kind of taking the position. I don't think he's ever said this, but he was very much kind of taking the position of just like, well, I'm as shocked as anyone to yeah. find this out. <laughs> Did it sound like this? No, what? Oh, oh no. no. Oh my god. Who would have yeah. that I would have never guessed in my co- no. Yeah. So the thing is that um it does not appear that like all of the individual charges that we've known uh, okay, so I had to split this into two parts. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a corporate culture at Activision Blizzard, according to the California lawsuit, and the EEOC lawsuit, uh, that is like women systematically were paid less, they were skipped over for promotion. You know that this was like women in general were treated like second class citizens at Activision Blizzard. Uh-huh. 
then there's this other side of it, which is the like, like sexual assault, like, yeah. like, like real bad shit happening. Yeah. Um, there is kind of, there's individual examples of this stuff happening. I wouldn't expect Bobby Kotick to know all of these things, but there were some, there were some parts of these allegations that were like, these are high level people in yeah. this company. And like, it's the sort of thing that you would expect Bobby Kotick to know about, at least as a notification. Like, whether yeah. if he had an HR department that was doing something about this, that he would at least be like, the studio head has had this said about him. Whether it's even true or not, you must be notified. Right. So the kind of like, oh, like, has, has, and, you know, he's done a lot of things in the last couple of months. Like, I think you were on when we talked about him taking this pay cut and not taking, like, a bonus until they got I their stuff so, going yeah. on. He's been kind of the mouthpiece of saying, like, oh, we're, we've got the zero tolerance policy. So here's the stuff. Um, in 2018, he was informed via email that there was an employee that was sexually assaulted in 2016 and, in, and that in 2017, a male supervisor pressured that employee to drink way too much at, like, work events and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there is a story about the ex-head who quit of uh, um, Treyarch who, uh, named Dan Bunting that had um, – there was an investigation that was done internally. It was recommended to – uh, Kodak that they let that that they let this team lead go. Yeah, he made specifically the decision to say no. Uh, we're going to keep that person on, and so mm-hmm. there was an internal. Uh, it's unclear. There's some kind of internal consequences to this whole thing. There's one thing that's been coming up here that's like really, really shitty. In 2006, I believe, where like he called a. Um, he left a voicemail on an assistant's phone saying that he would have her killed. <laughs> wow, that's a... Um... Yeah. Uh, uh, that he apologized for a long, long time ago. I, I don't... But, I mean, he still... He was like, my bad. I didn't mean to have it recorded. <laughs> the thing is... I Well, and then... And then... And then... Let's, let's mm-hmm. finish this up. There was also another incident that... Uh, well, it was like a private jet and a stewardess on the private jet or a, a, an attendant on this private jet mm-hmm. uh, had said that the, pirate, the pilot had like inappropriately groped them and apparently that flight attendant was let go and then there was an arbitration where they gave her 200 grand to sign an nda and kind of keep it covered up yeah um so like this doesn't necessarily like when you line all this stuff up and i read it a whole bunch of times i feel like what this says is bobby kodak is not a good person Mm -hmm. and like his kind of you know he put out a statement internally to the the you know to the people in Activision, and you guys can read it, but a lot of it is just, it's the same shit. It's the same corporate pap of like, yeah. we want this to be a great place to work where everybody can feel included and everybody's, uh, I value all of our employees and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, w- w- there is literally no way for us to know this stuff for sure because we're, everything we're reading is like you know from secondhand the outside, stuff yeah. from a journalist from a report. Some of the stuff is direct from the people that it has happened to, uh, and I, that's why I really wanted to make sure at the beginning to say that, like I already don't like this guy, mm-hmm. but all this lines up to basically be like there seems to be uh, there seems to be an environment or an attitude with this guy that is like profits over addressing these things in any kind of meaningful manner yeah. like money first uh employees second uh and then if the employees get hurt along the way we will deal with that on essentially like a case-by-case basis yeah um now whether he knew about a lot of the widespread stuff that was happening at blizzard it's i don't feel like i've seen a thing that says like yes like yeah like he emails. wasn't given like a full list of these are all the people doing all the things right having said that though he is kind of high up within that company and he created the culture in which he has been cultivated throughout Mm -hmm. from top to bottom yes and there's also the thing to consider that like whether he knew about all these individual things or not 
the person in charge bears responsibility for the shit that yeah. happens under their watch. So, like, let's say that he didn't know about these things. He should have. Yeah. Like, it is his responsibility as the person that runs this company to either, like, personally be aware of this stuff or to have set up a system so that the stuff is taken care of yeah. and doesn't become what it is, which is month four yeah. of just bullshit. So, like, um, w- regardless... Uh, I don't have a lot of sympathy for Bobby Kodak. I, I, yeah, I feel nothing. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I feel bad for anyone that's had to work there. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. Tilt that up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I leaned back and the, my microphone stayed up. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, uh, yeah. Mainly because every time I'm here, we talk about a different aspect of the same story. And it's just like, <sighs> I'm at the point of exhaustion with it. Cause yes. it's just like, can we just burn it with the fire and just move on to the next one. But the problem is to me, um, almost it seems like the entire video game industry really focuses on profit over people Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know you get rid of one that does this and sure this seems to be the worst example of it or at least the most um, evidence based example of it yeah Uh, but it seems pretty prolific throughout the industry that this is going on yeah I also wanted to just briefly take a quick aside because as I was reading all this today I realized that like I um uh, I have not been in the corporate workforce for a long time. Uh-huh. And when I was, I was disabused of the Kool-Aid real early on, like when I was 18. Yeah. Uh, and the company was like, oh, no, we're all a big family. We all look out for each other. It's a great place. We all go get drinks after work. And then it was like, uh, you're being downsized. So just like, get the fuck out of here. And yeah. it's like, I thought we were a family. And it's like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, you like, were, but now we fired you. You're, you're no you're, longer a family. Your key cards have been turned off. You can pick up your personal <laughs> effects in the lobby. Yeah. Well, Security yeah. will escort you out and it's just like when did this become prison and not like the hey we're all going to happy hour oh, Woo! Yeah. Uh, so like i was disabused of the notion of thinking that the place that i worked was anything but a job mm-hmm. um and like i don't get me wrong it wasn't like i was you know and go in and like cold shoulder everybody and then go home but i've never been under the a lot of people i feel like get really personally invested in their jobs yeah especially in office culture where like uh, i'm going to lunch with linda and then it, and then it like mutates into this thing where like they're your friends or like you, they're like half your friends or it's like the you get a crush on the receptionist like the office and yeah then you're fucking trying to get and then she's like no sorry and now you work together every fucking day and it's yeah. just like i have never been in that position because i have always been like that is work and when I leave, it stays there. Like I have broken many a hearts, um, not because people had crushes on me, although yes, but <laughs> um, but because people will, because I'm very open and and I'm I friendly and funny, I guess, mm-hmm. and so people tend to like me at work. Yeah. Um, and I have to be the one to break their heart and be like, you're not um anything to me. <laughs> Uh, like I don't say that, but really, like no, if I, I get you. if I quit my job today and I move on to another job, I'm not going to be like oh, I really miss these people. Right? It's a rare occasion that I'm like, oh yeah, this is who I need to like. These are my friends. They've been places where we tried to turn it into one of those. Um, we're a family, right? but there's like higher up doesn't think of us that way. And we'll be like, oh yeah, sure. You guys are a family. We love that for you. That's great. We're firing that one. Right. And it's just like, we, you either all band together to try to keep everyone together in a, in a a job that's not going to be worth it in the long run. Yeah. There's no point. So yeah. even if you can cultivate that sort of uh, thing, like the higher ups are worried about profit, so they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So it's just weird because it's it's it feels like a weird cult thing where you're just like, we're all a family until we need a sacrifice to make it rain for our crops. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No. And the, and the only reason I point that out is because I feel like sometimes with stuff like this, I have a very strange. Uh, it, it's all seems very strange to me. Yeah. Um, because it's just like. Uh, because I haven't worked in an office and I don't know what it's like uh, at this point. I mean, I've, I've worked in like call centers, but I've never actually worked in just like a, we're all doing our work at a desk in an office. Like I've always have a task that requires doing yeah. as opposed to this, like let's all go to lunch and have a beer. And then we're going to have a meeting at four. And it's like, my jobs have always been about like, there is a thing there is maybe the way to put it is this way. 
uh, all the jobs that I've ever had outside of Rage Select, like, have been a constant stream of work that never stops. Yeah. It's not like it's a, work you have come... to meet your metrics. You have to meet your numbers. Yes. You have to. So there's not a like, well, I'm working on project A and I'm just going to keep. Uh, b- Actually, that's not it. true. I worked QA at a game company. Oh, uh, really? And that was different. That was different because there were like long periods of inactivity. Anyway, let's just let's get back here. Uh, Bobby Kodak put out a big a big statement to the people. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, in response, there was another walkout. <laughs> For real. I. You know, I can't believe people are still working there. Yeah. I mean, I understand, you know, needing a job. Uh, but holy shit, I can't believe you're all still working there. <laughs> like, at that point, fucking quit. You know they don't give a shit about you. Yeah. You know where you stand. <laughs> yes. Well, they walked out. I think that uh, a lot of people were like, hey, Bobby Kodak, you came out a few weeks back and you were like, we have a zero tolerance policy now for this stuff. And it's like... Well, yeah, zero tolerance, BB, get uh, out. <laughs> and what I'm sure will be a shock to absolutely no one, uh, the board of directors came out and totally has Bobby Kodak's back and yeah. doesn't want, it's no problem. Nope, this is all a big misunderstanding. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, I feel like I'm a little torn because well, I think the last time that you and I talked, like I was giving Activision credit for it seems like trying to do something yeah. as opposed to just putting out the lips the lip service and then like um yeah but at this point it's kind of like i think you might need to clean house a little harder than you did like there were a lot of people that were either like the highest profile cases were shoved out um some people left on their own Mm -hmm. uh but at this point you you Kodak was never a popular person in the gaming industry as near as i can tell so like um it might be time, and also I have no, I have no great tears to shed for this man who has been making millions of dollars a year for yeah. like twenty or thirty years. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, he has been making the company. Does he like video games? Oh uh, no, Fuck like no. at all? Fuck is no. he just another dude that's very like, yeah, I business. Oh, the kids are really into the video games lately, and just hopped in. See, that's the thing. Did is he that, like, like video games at one point and then his soul was sucked out? Like, what happened? I don't th- I don't think so. I think he is a businessman. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about all of this is that I was thinking about, like, well, if Bobby Kodak leaves, like, how is that going to affect, like, the people that are big fans of Call of Duty? How is that going to affect the product that they make? And it's like, but he doesn't make the product. He doesn't make the creative decisions. He doesn't make, he doesn't decide, like, yeah. what genre it's going to be. He doesn't come up with things like Warzone. Yeah, or, he's not a creative. He's yeah. Just a, he's just a money guy. He's just a... He's just a fucking handler. So, like, I don't think that... He's the handler? (laughs) Batman's greatest villain. (laughs) 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 Batman, I am the the handler. handler. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so uh, the the only other thing is I was listening to a podcast and somebody did point out that the only problem here is that, like, the number of people in the industry with the qualifications to run a $27 billion video game company Mm -hmm. is low. So it's possible that the board of directors might not be like, might not like, like this guy, but might just be like, why don't we change what the qualifications are? Like what what does it need to be? Or let's break it up into several different departments and have everyone hold an accountable, like a, Sounds good to me. Uh, you know, I'm not. Sure. I'm not. You know, I'm a business major or anything. But like, you know, it shouldn't be. Figure well, it out. I guess we'll have to keep a monster in charge. Right. Like, come on. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. Um. <sighs> yes. So let's see. We already talked about Dan Bunting uh, from Treyarch leaving. Uh, when when this article came out, like he was working right up until the day that we're recording this, and then when this article came out, or the week that we're recording this, and the day this article came out, he was mentioned specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was just like, "Okay, I, I'm I'm leaving. I'm I'm leaving immediately. Like yeah. I'm not gonna get caught up in this. Like I'm I'm going. <laughs> um, I'm getting my fingerprints on that train wreck. Yeah. Uh, there's. Okay, so we're not done yet. There's a few Jesus more things. Jesus Christ. Uh, there is a small group of stockholders that hold Activision Blizzard stock that when this was originally coming out had called for all bonuses for all top-level executives to be frozen, uh-huh. you know, until how this th- stuff happened. How did that work out for everyone? Uh, completely and totally ignored. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. they're, the, they're led by the Strategic Organizing Center Investment Group. Great, guys. Sockig? Sucking. Sucking. Uh, they have apparently 
this is this is this is the level that we're talking about here. This group, this shareholder group, represents 4.8 million shares of Activision Blizzard mm-hmm. out of uh, 778 million shares. God. Seven hundred seventy-eight point oh, eight yeah. nine so they million were like, shares. I'm sorry, what you tiny ant? Right. So they were basically just like this guy. Th- these this investment group obviously. <laughs> they were just like this. Bobby Kodak needs to go, and everybody was like, <laughs> "Who let this fly in here? Bzz, <laughs> like, get out of here!" Uh, yeah, have you ever seen the meme of like people asking for suggestions, and the person makes a suggestion and gets thrown oh, out the window? The window that yeah. is hundred percent what happened there. <laughs> yeah. So that didn't really do very much. Yeah. That didn't really do very much. Um, another thing that came out of this Wall Street Journal article that was really interesting was there is a person at blizzard called fran townsend she's an ex bush administration staffer that was part of the people that were do out there doing spin on guantanamo torture Mm. uh like why this is a good thing um she is part of this women's like coalition group in blizzard she resigned from that but like when the first california lawsuit came out she put out this thing of just like this is government overreach and blah 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 blah, blah. you know the standard kind of like i'm I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush but the stuff that you see from like right-wing talking points of Uh just like how dare a state government um, interaction with the business practices exactly like that yeah it turns out that also she wrote this uh, this big um, internal message that was immediately leaked uh, that was a real kind of like – basically it was just – I mean here's – I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's big, but it was just like the – you know, in the beginning it says, a recently filed lawsuit represent, presented a distorted and untrue picture of our company, including factually incorrect, old, and out-of-context stories, some from more than a decade ago. And like it goes on to talk about the things that they're going to do and that they put the – you know, they're trying to – review compensation and they got some bullet points for this was the early days of like we're trying to mollify people with some very small yeah. drops um well turns out that this email was not written by fran townsend this email was written by bobby Kodak, who then told fran townsend to basically sign her name to it because it would not look good for a man to be sending this out and he basically wanted a lady face on wow. this. Wow, he was like, I'm gonna go ahead and use you as a human shield. Yeah. That in and of itself to me is almost worse than some of the other stuff that I've heard of. Is just that like, not also a fireable offense? <laughs> like in general? I'm just uh, yeah. yeah. Is it or is it uh delegating work to somebody else? <laughs> no, I mean the thing is that it's not even like he told her what to write. It's like he wrote, wrote it, it. And then he and was then, like, go ahead and sign your name. Yeah. Okay, Satan. <laughs> I'll just sign away that. Like, yeah. Not- <laughs> he said he takes responsibility for the incident and regrets it. And Ms. Townsend should not be blamed for this mistake. I refuse uh, to believe he feels regret. I do not. I like don't, the uh, emotion of regret. I don't think he does. I don't think so either. Because, um, yeah, what a, what, a, what a move. Yeah. What a move from a guy, you know? Like we have all these, uh, all these. <laughs> It'll look bad if I send it, sir. It's gonna look bad no matter what. Right. So you're just, just a dick. <laughs> it's just the idea of being like, oh, all of these allegations about how we treat women bad are out here. Uh, we need to get in front of this, but I can't. So you do it. Yeah. But I will tell you. I will put the words in your mouth. But get a pen, and I will dictate what well, you are to it, say to people. Woman, <laughs> if I wanted to hear your opinions, I would write them for you. Oh, wait, I did. <laughs> yeah, like, this is just some scumbag yeah, shit right a, here. What like, a piece of shit. Yep. Yeah. But we're yep. not done yet. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, um, so... Okay, this is ongoing, and by the time this has come out, I think there's already been some other stuff that's come out. The uh, um, boss of PlayStation, uh, uh, CE, no, uh, yeah, PlayStation boss, Jim Ryan, put out an internal thing to their uh, the Sony employees saying, like, that they think that this is terrible and they think that he should resign and blah, 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 blah. And this was obviously done with the intention of being immediately leaked to the press. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that as the point that we're recording this, uh, Phil Spencer, or whatever, over at Xbox, I think has done something very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a lot of kind of like CEOs saying this is terrible, and we think it's a bad thing. Yeah. The 
thing about this though is that like that's nice and everything but like hey playstation are you willing to say we're gonna no, delist I, call of duty from the store until this gets resolved 100 what i was wondering <laughs> like oh are they gonna like put their money where their mouth is and like not fucking do it or no yeah of course well, not. I, I doubt it i mean the thing is that well call knows? of duty makes so much money for all these companies so yes. like Call of Duty makes a shitload of money. Yeah. Like, uh, that's the problem that we're dealing with here is this is like, this is the ultimate test of like, no, really, in order to show that you care and believe about what's happening, believe these things and care about what's happening here, you must make less money yeah. in United States America capitalism. Yeah. Like, you must sacrifice a shitload of money to show that you're more. It's the ultimate moral test. It's, I, it's fucking it's, it's, CEO uh, Kobayashi Maru over here. It is. And it's also oddly uh, upsetting to know for a fact that Call of Duty will m still make that money. Yes. Like, they're the people that play Call of Duty, not everyone Call of Duty fan that's listening right now, but the large, vast majority of them don't care and will buy it. Yep. So there is no real like call for boycott. You're just not going to get it. True. That's very true. I mean, I bought it. I'll be honest. I yeah. mean, like I bought it. I, we, I, we talked about it where I was like, I thought they were making good steps. I thought they were kind of yeah. on a good road. And then it's just like, can't go two weeks without some bullshit coming out of this yeah. place. At this point, it's unless they do a full, like, obviously I don't buy a lot of games, but I was like a huge Overwatch fan yeah. from Blizzard. And um Oh Blizzard's on my my fucking nana yeah. list for right now. Like Oh yeah, like uh, but at this point unless it's something that uh, like they do like a full overhaul, I really don't expect to spend any money um in our household on anything from Blizzard Activision. I mean, when we talked about this last week and I feel like it's only it's only gotten I mean, this whole podcast will give you a reason, but it's just like there are so many games yeah. that you could be playing. There's so many great games out right now that you could be playing that like why why engage with this nonsense yeah um so all right amanda yes are we done talking about activision blizzard i'm afraid <laughs> to answer that jeff are we done nope god damn it jeff why do you set me up uh so uh a little while back when um Oh, geez. Uh, J. Allen Brack left as the CEO of Blizzard. Mm -hmm. uh, he was replaced by co-leaders, Jen O'Neill and Mike Ybarra. Mike Ybarra was part of... I don't remember what he was part of. He was part of some division. Uh, and then Jen O'Neill was the CEO of Vicarious Visions, that was the company that made like the remaster of Diablo 2, and I think they did uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. They were said to be brought up as co-leaders, and part of this was like, you know, it, hey, here's a lady in a top spot. Yeah. So part of this is very unfortunate, uh, it, it, and it's not necessarily like I don't think it's like evil so much as it is fucking stupid. But mm -hmm. I, to me, this shows the level of ineptitude. When they were brought to this position, Mike Ybarra was making more than Jen O'Neill. And when they were elevated, they were elevated without like redoing their contracts. So it turns out that they were put into co-lead positions. And she was making less money. And the lady was making less money. What? I can't believe it. Now, part of that is that that she was making less money before she was elevated to that position and apparently there was a process that they were going through to renegotiate both of their salaries and part of that was they were supposed to have equal salaries however given what was happening yeah. this should have been done immediately yeah well how uh, long ago was this three months so they they had been working as co they had been working as co-leaders for three months uh yes but, well, and actually, after one month, Jen O'Neill uh, saw them dragging their feet on doing the renegotiation of their salaries yeah. and sent an internal email basically saying, uh, calling a vote of no confidence against Chancellor Valorum, and uh, she's leaving. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, I'm fucking out of well here. she should. Yeah. Like, what uh, the fuck would you stay at a place that's like, yeah, 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 we'll get to it. Fuck you, get to it. It takes nothing to change that sort of thing. Like, yep. even if it's like, oh, you know, you have to contracts and lawyers look over or whatever if they're well, not get them in on the weekend we're in fucking crisis mode like you know uh, yeah if you're but even then if you're not starting that process it's gonna take even longer yep. so like don't 
bullshit me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me my fucking money. Apparently, like, after she put in her intent to resign because it's not... <laughs> were they like... Why? Well, they at that point apparently they did come back and match her salary to Yabara's uh, salary. Too little, too late. But you know, yeah. So yeah, that was another thing that came out. Woo! So the thing is that like <laughs> they were like, in fairness, she was a woman. <laughs> there was so there's so many of these things that if there was one thing, mm -hmm. it would be like, well. This is bad, but like corporate America sucks. Like I, I oh yeah, I, I've never worked for a company that hasn't dicked me over or been shitty in some way or another. But when you put all of this together and step back and look at the fucking magic eye picture and like squint, it's yeah. like there is a systematic problem in this company. Hundred percent. And what you're doing is not fixing it. And not only that, but like last week we talked earnings calls, and like it's not. Activision Blizzard is a $27 billion company, but we I feel like we found out in 2020 that a lot of United States companies do not hold a huge amount of money in savings in case the dry times happen. Yeah. They get crazy with this shit. So That's because they're giving themselves bonuses instead of fucking right. saving it or putting it back into the company. So it's possible if this shit keeps going on... Because the thing is that normally when you get any of these big corporate problems, it's bad. Mm -hmm. And then they, they put out their mouthpiece to address it. And then they say they're going to make some stupid changes that everybody knows isn't going to do anything. And then everybody forgets about it. But this shit just keeps coming up. Like it will not stop yeah. being a thing. And if it doesn't stop being a thing at some point, the money may start to go down. Yeah. And I'm I'm hopeful about this in a way um yeah. that i feel like it's showing that people are tolerating less bullshit yeah like across the board not just here but like everywhere and that i think people are starting to get a little more of a um, empathy towards that and being very like oh like they're doing this fuck that we're not buying that anymore like they i constantly and i don't know if i'm just on like the wokest of tiktoks <laughs> but i'm constantly seeing like oh we're not gonna shop here because they're not listening to their customers or we're not shopping there or buying this brand yeah. because they allowed this to happen with their workers like i see people much more conscious about that yeah and i feel like it's because a lot of people have dealt with it and are no longer willing to tolerate it themselves mm -hmm. so they understand other people not allowing it to talk like not wanting it to happen to other people so i i'm i'm hopeful that that's what this is going to turn into yeah um but you know I we're mean, all very poor and just <laughs> desperate well, for work and it's the thing is that i feel like as i've because i feel like i shifted out of the workforce and into fucking spill.com at like a very strange time well yeah i went from like graduated high school went and got a tech job during the booming 90s worked tech until i wanted to die and then like went back to school and was a student for five years and worked mm -hmm. like retail on the side and then like went into the creative field and then started up fucking rage select yeah um so from the outside it seems to me like there was a point maybe in like the 80s or the 90s when people hadn't been abused at every single turning point by large corporations yeah. where people would be more than willing to like uh, like excuse some of this shit but that they have done nothing but take advantage of people for like 20 years straight yeah the point where it's just like trust a corporation the, what am I stupid? Like I wasn't born yesterday. They're yeah. all fucking evil and they want your money. Like I freaking you know, yeah, so yeah. I it's it's weird. It feels like it went like the 80s was all like money money money, fuck the workers, fuck whatever. Like if you can make money, make money. And then the 90s was a lot of like creatives creating their own fields to mm -hmm. um like offset that and then uh the 2000s to like now has been very um we've taken your creativity and we monetized it and yep. now it's money 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 again and I, w I we literally just had this conversation at my job because i was explaining early youtube and like <laughs> maker studio and um um oh god what was it called the there was another one 
um like machinima machinima that's yeah. what it was like machinima Ooh. and even like that guy with the glasses and yeah. you know like people that like they all well we're all just gonna be like a collective of creative people doing this cool creative blah blah and blah one and they're by like one. i'm just gonna eat all your content and yep. money and then and now all you like a lot of youtubers that are real popular have agents and producers mm-hmm. and a team and it's not the one dude with a camera creating like their content it's no longer run by it turned like 14 year olds that were supposed to be creatives into businessmen yeah. and worried about the algorithm and like uh, well i can i can't say these words within the first two minutes and then after that I, and it's just like the it's I, I, i'm sure that that shit is affecting rage select oh yeah i do not care like i will never but I, you're not a, like a 15 year old trying to be the next well, yeah. logan paul you know what i mean how like, do you know i could be trying to be the next logan paul there's a big there's a big open slot yeah, on the internet Logan for Paul often talks old. about his fucking cube pillows. <laughs> That's brand integration, <laughs> baby. Hey, they didn't even have to pay me. They didn't that even send gonna, me a free one, right? I was going to say, this whole thing was like <laughs> secretly sponsored by pillows. <laughs> that I wish I could get some free pillows that way. I wish that fucking purple would would send me a new mattress my, so that I could hawk it on the show. My but. favorite thing is that like the best news we're going to have today is that Jeff got a really good pillow. That's right. Well, okay. <laughs> I believe at this point, let me close this, but I think that we are actually... Yes, we are oh, actually thank done. God. It is time now to move on to the next controversy. Yeah, I'm good. So, uh, last week, or this week, uh, there was a company called Lightstream. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people may have heard of this. Uh, Lightstream is... Okay, do you know what Streamlabs is? No. Okay, you know when you're watching YouTube and then when... So, or when you're watching Twitch and when somebody donates, a thing comes up on screen, goes yeah. blah, 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 right? Like uh, Streamlabs, Lightstream, there's a few different places. They are companies that automate that. So it's like you oh, run okay. your... Kind of a plug and play into your Twitch stream. Right. When, when, when I did one of the fundraisers many years ago, I had a thing where a little Jeff face came up. That was all through stream labs yeah uh light stream is trying to do a thing where they are simplifying the whole like chat overlay donation thing specifically for console streamers so like right now if you stream from a console it's like you just get whatever playstation's built-in twitch thing is Mm -hmm. but what they want to do is they want to make it a thing where you can like use your phone to set up all the overlays instead of having to have like a computer yeah uh, and all that stuff so you basically like start the stream on your console and then it goes to your phone or and then your phone picks up the stream adds all the overlays to it and then streams that to your twitch channel not a bad idea yeah not terrible um however the way that they did it uh has caused some eyebrows to be raised why so uh exhibit a um the website so lightstream um they uh wait hold on am i getting these mixed up stream stream labs not Lightstream. Le- Streamlabs. Streamlabs is the one that is... I'm sorry. I They're so fucking close, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, Streamlabs <laughs> and Lightstream. Streamlabs uh, uh, has this new thing that they're putting out. Um, so they put out their website... And Lightstream tweeted it with oh. the like, Ooh. hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it uh, up a bit so it's not copied meme. Uh, because can you tell which of these websites is Lightstream Holy and shit. which is Streamlabs? They are exactly the same. Pretty much identical. Yeah. Um, like pretty much identical. Not only are they completely identical, but like the customer uh testimonials <gasps> at the bottom are like the same wow so uh, literally just like copy paste they're slight they're, they're a little different they're yeah. slightly different but they're so similar that it's like yeah mm, but, yeah i feel like somebody was like use this as a template for what you're setting up and then they and whoever did it was like zero creativity and literally just like download that wordpress and then like paste yeah. it well, change you the know color when you, like you get a cover letter like a uh, template to help you write a cover letter for like a job and you just sort of replace like a groundskeeper with right. like you know whatever fucking cashier and that's it the only change you made yep that's kind of what it, it comes off as uh so 
uh, Streamlabs came out and basically said like, oh, sorry, our bad. We just, that was like a placeholder. Uh, and then apparently they changed some of the verbiage and stuff, but not a lot, not a lot. Uh, that's, that's part one. Oh, uh, shit. Part two is that Streamlabs is marketing this as Streamlabs OBS because they built this tool on top of OBS. For anybody who doesn't know, OBS is Open Broadcasting Studio. It's the thing that everybody uses to stream with. Mm -hmm. um, they asked OBS, can we use OBS in the name of the product? Yeah. And OBS, an open source uh, company, they said, uh, no, you cannot. And then they did. Ah. And then they trademarked Lightstream OBS as like their company name, thus now causing confusion about what is OBS. Is yeah. it is this OBS? Is that OBS? Uh, and they're like, yeah, we, we, we specifically said, don't do that. This is open source. We're all fucking Linux and shit. Like, right. Yeah. You know, uh, and they did it anyway. Um, Elgato came out and said that they have had problems in the past with Streamlabs ripping off UI elements from their game capture Okay, so we're software. going back and forth between saying Streamlabs and Lightstream. So, Lightstream, no. So Streamlabs is the one that copied Lightstream. Streamlabs, and yes. And then Streamlabs is also the one that's doing the OBS thing. Yes. And then Streamlabs is also having the issue with Gato. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. If I no, keep you're messing fine. it up. I just, I, I, you might have been saying it correctly, but I got the, I, it felt like we were going back and forth and back again. Yes. So I just wanted to make sure. So Streamlabs. Streamlabs are the bad guy here suck yes okay. they're the bad guy here there's also there was another thing where they talked about like um uh it was like an ex-employee that talked about how like they just never fucking listened to anybody and they were just like no fucking go copy that shit like yeah. immediately and they were like we probably should do that and they're like shut your fucking mouth like uh just not a very good place and like yeah. full of just kind of just like rip it all off it's funny i can kind of see just from my limited knowledge of kind of the way that this stuff works, like I can kind of see what's happening at Streamlabs of like they're a company that realized that there's a gap in the market and they wanted to fill that gap. So what they did was they just stole a lot of different ideas. Yeah, and they put it together. Barely changed them and smooshed them together, uh, building on top of other people's creative work in order to make a product. Because this is th this is obviously a paid service, like yeah. the, the getting your donos and stuff on top. Um, so, yeah, not great. Yeah, not a good look. Uh, in response to this... Uh, there's been a lot of like streamers who actually use the uh, Streamlabs Streamlabs products, specifically the big two right now. Uh, Pokimane, do you know who Pokimane is? I know the name, but yeah. I don't know the. I don't watch the their streams. Um, she's like on their website. It's like ah, oh, the big celebrities who use our product, yeah. and she's just like, yeah, you guys need to either fix this or take my fucking face off of your website. Uh, another one. I'm not making any judgments here. Hassan, the, the big political guy mm -hmm. that is all over the place, um, he uses their same product and is basically just like, you you must fix this or I'm going to go use your competitor's product. Yeah. And like that, but I mean, because the two of them are like big money yeah, yeah. fucking makers on Twitch. So like the idea that they're going to stop using this product is pretty big. I have a feeling that within a week, Streamlabs is going to, is going to sort this shit out to the point where they can't be roasted on Twitter anymore. Yeah. They'll change it enough so that they can't. I mean, they'll change it just enough to shut everyone up. Yeah. Like they obviously did not come up with this idea and they have obviously stolen a bunch of different technology and art and just like shit. They still fucking testimonials. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They're not a great company, but it is a good idea. And if they can get their shit together, I mean, I don't know, whatever, you know, again, this goes back to what we were talking about before. Like what, company is like great and laudable and moral and never does anything wrong and yeah. you can trust them i do not trust any of you motherfuckers yeah you can't <laughs> trust a single fucking one of them yep except for pillowcube.com forward slash rage no it's could not. you imagine god <laughs> trying to make it happen um, call us pillow cube so actually you know what i would just i have an idea amanda yes i have a i have an idea i have a million dollar idea and I, I, I'm willing to put it out there because if somebody else can fucking make it, mm -hmm. then I would buy it from them. So I think that there should be a, a, a like a piece of software that you can download. And like if you buy 
a pillow cube. Mm-hmm. You should be able to put the code from your receipt into this software, mm-hmm. and then the internet should stop showing you ads for pillow cube. I <laughs> bought it. Yeah. Like you did it. You showed me enough ads. Yeah. You did it. You you got it. You, you won. They're like second pillow cube. I I keep getting emails from that that one the medical two hundred dollar pillow thing where they're just like, hey, we're having a sale. Do you want like a new cover? Hey, do you want to come rate your product? Like yeah. you want to email the back. You don't and be want like, me to rate your. You don't product. want me to rate your product. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Um. All right. So yes, uh, Streamlabs also they dropped OB the OBS. I mean, but they had to, right? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, they could have tried to weather through it, but like, I don't know, man. These that days, one, I don't think they would have let them though. Yeah. Like weather through constant harassment. I don't know. Yeah, you'd had to get a you'd had to get a lawyer for that shit. So, uh, all right. I think we've got time for maybe maybe a little bit. We got a big block of Xbox here. Let's see if yeah. we can get through it in in five or six minutes. So, uh, NFTs. Hmm. Horseshit. I'm going to call them nifties. Horseshit. I call balonies. Yeah, everyone um, I know that's an artist um, hates NFTs. Yes. I, I, I'm, so I trust the artists. I, that's just my personal. I'm just going to go out here. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, my, my opinion is subject to change if something happens. But across the board, cryptos, NFTs, mm-hmm. blockchain, you can throw it all in the fucking trash. Like You can't because they're not tangible things. <laughs> they're non-fungible. <laughs> I need the fungible tokens to be able to throw them in the carpet. Uh, so anyway, uh, Phil Spencer of Xbox was doing an interview with Axios where he basically said, and I'll, I'll sum it up. Um, basically, he said, like, we are not interested in any NFT stuff right now. He mm-hmm. basically said, like, this is, a, this is a new market. They're still trying to figure it out. They're kind of getting it all put together. Uh, we are not interested in having any part of that at the moment. Yeah. Th- kind of the end. Now, he didn't necessarily, I mean, I mean, again, like I just said, like, it's possible that in the future there might be a game where it's like, oh, they figured out how to use NFTs in a way that I'm just like, great. I don't know how. Yeah, but I don't, it doesn't. Never yeah. say never. I'm still, I'm still unsure about like they keep saying like yeah we're making games using blockchain and I'm like why? Yeah. What does that do that would help? I mean I know what blockchain is and I don't understand why that would help like at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's a good thing though. No NFTs on Xbox. Huzzah! Yep. For now. Did you know that in addition to all the other horrible things that our governor is doing, that they're like courting, do you know they're building um, huge crypto mining warehouses that are going to suck, uh, like what was the thing? Like one of them running is going to suck 280,000 houses worth of electricity out of the power grid? Yay! I hate it here! Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. On Earth, mostly. <laughs> Uh, also, in another uh, in another interview, um, uh, Phil Spencer talked about this was at uh, GQ. Uh, he basically said um, that he was talking about Starfield, which is the Bethesda the space game that we've seen ver- almost nothing right, about, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is uh, Xbox exclusive because Microsoft bought bethesda mm-hmm. and in this interview he basically said that like he kind of sees the same thing for elder scrolls 6 now this is yeah this is a, this is not an official announcement of this but if this if true huge yeah huge making the elder scrolls 6 an xbox and Ex- pc exclusive yeah how are they gonna sell me elder scrolls 6 for two decades on every single device yeah if it's an xbox exclusive amanda i don't know i just got it again they just put it out for the ps5 and the series x like yeah. ah, um well, that's a uh, timed exclusive could be timed i don't think starfield is timed though i think they're just like we no, I mean, I don't because they just starfield like they straight up I'm, the i just because elder scrolls is is such a like i feel like there'd be an uproar if it's not everywhere well I said this a long time ago, and I'll say it again. Like, there are two scenarios, right? Mm-hmm. If it's an Xbox exclusive, 
they're going to sell a lot of fucking Xboxes. That's true. And if it's not an Xbox exclusive, they're going to make a lot of fucking money on PlayStation owners buying it. So it's almost like... There's a win-win either way. Yeah. like. Uh, but if it's a timed exclusive, then you will get people that are just like, I got to play it now. I mean, I'm going to get all the fucking spoilers if I don't get to play it now. Yep. And then they will... And then also... They will Xbox. And then, you know, then there are people that... Because there's plenty of people that were like, had to get a PlayStation so that they can play that Spider-Man game. Yes, that's true. That's true. I've never... Uh, it's funny because I've kind of gotten outside of that ecosystem because it's just like, well, I, I'm going to buy all of them. That, like, yeah, I, John I, and I are the same way. I mean, granted, we are uh, poor <laughs> and we can't afford to, to get all of them. Yeah. Uh, but we like our our general thought is like there is no winning the console wars we're just gonna buy all the cons there there's only losing for us because <laughs> well, we want them all there's like, also no console wars it's just like i know but it, you know it's this is everyone always but who won yeah. xbox or playstation like the billion dollar <laughs> companies i don't know man who won i'm who an, fucking won? i'm an adult and yeah. uh, so i don't care uh, <laughs> it's so funny i'm not pretending like this is musical chairs anyway though but this is an unqualified win for microsoft it is yeah. to do it. i mean no matter what they do no matter what they do with this timed exclusive full exclusive uh making it multi-platform because the the but see the thing is that like of all the companies in the world that can that have a thick skin about being dragged by gamers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I feel like Microsoft has been getting nothing but shit. Yeah. Since I mean, I was I was like a, a teenager when Windows ninety five came out, and everybody was <laughs> like, Ugh, "Fucking Steve Bannon." Yeah. Like you know, Microsoft has been getting shit from the internet for years. So like, what are you Not gonna do? For me, I've been behind you, Xbox. What are you gonna do, Phil Spencer? Are you gonna, guys gonna get more shit? Because yeah. you announced a thing that's unpopular, <laughs> like <laughs> jokes on you. Yeah, I have no heart for you to break. <laughs> I've seen the live chat when Xbox does a thing where it's just like fucking PlayStation's better. Yeah, fuck Xbox. So I've got a switch. I feel like at this point like, they'll just read it. Yeah, and they're like, ah, oh, look like uh, PlayStation lover sixty nine says. <laughs> Xbox is the shit is sucks and the, I'm gonna poop on it. Just, I feel like like ten years ago they were just they were Jennifer Conley at the end of Labyrinth and they're just like you have no power over me. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah like, uh, basically. What, yeah. Are you, what are you gonna do? What are uh, you gonna do? Uh, it's the uh, uh, Rick and Morty. The like your booze mean nothing. I see what makes you cheer. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Like also. I, I, I know that this might be unpopular to people who have a PlayStation, and I, I, I get it. I really, you truly do. You are people who have a PlayStation. I know, but people who only have a PlayStation uh, who would maybe be mad at this, right? Is that, like, if if Microsoft puts Elder Scrolls Six on the PlayStation, they might get $60 from you. But if they keep it on the Xbox, they might get $500 from yeah. you. And like <laughs> Something to consider. Yeah. Also, you could just get a PC. I mean, you know, you just dead. Or, 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 uh, depending on how it goes, you might be able to get an Xbox One, the old one, mm -hmm. and stream Elder Scrolls Six through Game Pass. You could do it on your PC. You could stream it from the X Cloud, like Stadia onto the PC app through a browser. You wouldn't have to have a good PC for it because you're streaming it. You could do that. That sounds like something um, several shitty PlayStation owners would do. <laughs> in fact, in fact, it's possible, depending on how it goes right now, I don't know if you can do it or not, you might be able to stream it through your web browser on your PlayStation. Holy shit. That's... <laughs> I don't that's insane but I hope somebody tries it. I don't know it's possible I'll leave you all with that in mind we still have a whole shitload left to go um, but we're going to take a break because it has been an hour Yay. and uh, when we come back we're going to have significantly fewer uh, uh, harassment and or like bad you know what's going to happen stories. during this break <laughs> uh, well that's true that's true we'll be back
and we're back. We're still here? Yes. Oh, God. Nobody's nobody's allowed to leave until the <laughs> podcast is over. <laughs> you should try to take your earbuds out while you're listening to this. It's like, nope, nope. <laughs> listen like to the whole gluten. fucking thing. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so when last we left off, uh, we were talking about some Xbox news. Um, Xbox had some good news for owners. Uh, 76 new games were added to the backwards compatibility list mm -hmm. of the Xbox. So... Um, the Xbox backwards compatibility program was like frozen in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is the 20th anniversary, so they're like, boom, here's 76 more, and apparently this is the last group of Aww, um, games added, but it's a pretty good it's a pretty good group. Yeah, there's only one I knew <laughs> about previously. Which is? Uh, Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. Because my brother and I were Red Dead Revolver fans. Mm -hmm. we, I don't... I like Red Dead Redemption, but like when people were like, they're doing a sequel to Red Dead Redemption, I was like, fuck yeah. And it was not Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. And it's... So to me, when it's very like Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead... Re like it's called Red Dead because the main character is named Red. Yep. But so it's, it's true. Vine. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's actually some interesting stuff in here. Um, Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand is is, oh is back in the mix. Oh my god! Um, the Time Splitters games are in here. Oh nice. Um, let's see. Dead there's or some, Alive. A bunch all of Dead them. or Alives. Uh, a bunch Ooh, of the Fear, fear games. Yeah. Um, all the Max Pains. All the Max Pains. Yep. Some Mortal Kombat's in there. Mm -hmm. The Otokis, which were the, like these Xbox from software games. There's some some guy. There's some guy on the internet that had a mad on for me to play those games back in the old days. <laughs> He's gonna show up again and be like, "It's backwards compatible. I'm back after five years." <laughs> I I actually bought the first one and uh, the left, right, up, down are all reversed. Blech. Nope. Never mind. And, and, and there's no way to unreverse them because it's an Xbox original Xbox, Xbox game. game yeah. So. Yeah, not happening. Yep. Uh, Red Dead Revolver, obviously. Re Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah. A bunch of stuff in here. A bunch of Star Wars games. Um, yeah. So that's good. And apparently, like I said, this is going to be the last. So this is kind of the, the swan song of the backwards compatibility. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of backwards compatible games on yeah. Xbox. I mean, 76 is a great amount too. they also added uh the 60 frames boost to a few things 60 frames per second boost mm -hmm. uh so fallout 3 fallout new vegas dragon age origins and alan wake all now run at 60 fps on the xbox Fuck yes. so, yep yeah good stuff uh let's see from there uh we we're, we're back into oh no good uh oh, no good. so halo launched this week with the multiplayer mm -hmm. uh the single player comes out december 8th but the multiplayer is out right now uh one of the new things added to uh it is a battle pass um i don't do you, are you familiar with the battle pass I, like I, fortnite has them apex has them it's basically like you know how there's a, a, a there'll be like a track right yeah and as you get experience points you unlock things on that track right and the battle pass is like a second track of better stuff oh. that you pay for and then you have a whole like season to unlock that the thing is that right now uh halo players are like the progression is super duper slow yeah and the stuff that you get it's like they want it they want it faster um now i didn't know this but apparently the battle pass for halo uh is going until may of next year so it is yeah geared it, for a super long yeah tail um but I want the good, uh, good feeling emotion juice, uh, brain chemicals from yeah. opening a fucking loot box. So, <laughs> uh, but the good news is that that they've gotten around. They're basically changing the progression on it so that it goes a little faster, mm -hmm. and uh, they're making some tweaks as far as like specific times that you see experience points get added and stuff like that so you know uh, we'll see i mean if it, it's going till may they've got time to like work Tweak it, out. it out a little yeah yeah and it's also good that like you know their community didn't like it and they were like okay well let's go back and yeah and there's nothing it, wrong so. with like altering that sort of thing yeah uh because there's definitely so that's a, not horrible news like sure no. it happened and people didn't like it but they went heard and then they yeah and they, they seem to be on the motion to fix it yeah 
That's uh, positive, Jeff. Yeah. Spin it in a positive way. It's all positive. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of online video games, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard has an interesting thing where they posted about... Um, first, they have their anti-cheat thing, Ricochet, which is like a kernel-level anti-cheat thing on the PC. So there's a little bit of like uh, about that. Mm -hmm. But one of the more interesting things was when they were talking about this, uh, the blog post says... Um, Permanent suspensions for security infractions may now apply franchise-wide, including Call of Duty Vanguard, as well as any past, present, and future titles in the Call of Duty Holy franchise. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, Get caught cheating, never cheat again. Yeah. And apparently they want to like, you know, they want to tie this to like the hardware ID, right? So you're not just, you can just change your network card or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm always curious whenever this comes up, to find out what people think about this because like if you paid cash money for a product um like should the company that made that be allowed to render your product inoperable in a way regardless of what you do with it like um well it, uh, isn't every purchase essentially agreeing to a terms of service when, oh yeah in use so in a sense yes yeah. Because you are agreeing to it when you're making that purchase. Yep. So, yep. yeah, I mean, like, uh, sure, you know, there's there's levels of it, right? Like, you just, I, somebody does, like, a fan art, and you're like, no, that's, like, you know. Mm -hmm. But, it, uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about cheating. You're, like, gaming, especially a lot of people that are cheating are cheating during, like, the um, multiplayer yeah. Right. So oh no. It's, specifically, yes. It's, that's it's affecting why. a vast number of people. Right. So yeah, I mean, like, I uh, I wouldn't support cheaters suck. It also, it, oh uh, yeah, I'm 100 percent on board with that. And it like fucks the whole gameplay, right? Like you spend all this time trying to design it to be played a certain way, and then people are like, "But what if I just made it so I'm God?" Right. It's like, well, that's not fun. Yeah. I don't even know why that's fun for you, to be honest. <laughs> I don't really get it either. I, I do though. Also, that's interesting to see the idea of this being. Uh, of also moving forward, right? Of yeah. not just like your band now, but like your band and forever. forever. Yeah. I mean, I guess that like, I guess that in a certain way, it kind of comes down to this like, we've tried everything to do this like regular, but now we are just enforcing the most draconian yeah. like uh, consequences humanly possible <laughs> because it's the only way to deter, deter people from doing this stupid shit in the first place. Yeah. Wasting a bunch of time and money and effort circumventing the anti-cheat stuff that we have in order to make the game less fun for everybody yeah so which is yeah I, i'll never understand that i don't like, either. i want to be a dick yep but then i don't really understand playing online multiplayer games so yeah you well know. i actually do sometimes um you know i loved me some overwatch and shit like that but like I mean, you used to do Call of Duty back in the old days. I did, yeah. I, I prestiged on uh, Call of Duty. There you go. Um, Black Ops 2. But, like, even that, you know, you get people that were, like, fucking not cheating, cheating, but they were definitely, like, spawn camping and doing all the, like, this shit isn't fun. You're literally just waiting for somebody to show up so you can shoot them in two seconds. Like, play the fucking game. Yep. I do not understand it. Nah, I don't know. I don't understand it. Uh, let's see. In other Call of Duty news, I actually found this was really interesting. So UK Call of Duty sales mm -hmm. were down 40% this year. Um, this was talk, kind of going back to talking about Activision like taking an actual financial hit. Yeah. And this is really important because, um, as I've talked about previously, Activision has consolidated everything. Activision now, as a company, makes one game, and that game is Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, so 40% in the UK is a big deal. Now, the thing is that that's been offset. So there's still, it's still the one of the best, I think it is the best selling game of 2021 right now. Yeah. Um, based on other stuff. But um, it's, oh no, sorry. FIFA 22 was the greatest selling. Of course it was. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's down. It's down. It's down. Now, Is part there of that, a specific reason for that? Uh, not clear. Um, he... Some of it might be the fact that they're launching against like Battlefield just came out mm -hmm. and like there's been some other offerings. Uh, some of it might just be the fact that like 
Warzone is free to play with microtransactions. And so if you're just like shifted from adversarial Call of Duty to Warzone, you don't need to buy the new one. Warzone got updated and so you can just keep playing Warzone. So, um, yeah, I, uh, that's, but it's going to be interesting to see. Also, um, another reason that was listed in this article, this is a gamesindustry.biz article, is that uh, traditionally speaking, all World War II Call of Duty sell worse than the like, Modern Warfare ones, just across the board. Really? Like the ones set in World War II just don't do as good as the like, ones. Uh, like um, in the like US as well, like everywhere, or like the UK is like, we don't really won't care about the... World War Two and the U.S. is like World War Two. I don't you know really I mean? know because in this article it just says uh, World War Two Call of Duty games have typically performed bo- uh, below um, that of the more modern based titles. Oh, so. Okay, yeah, that sounds across like yeah all um, markets. Also, uh, Halo, right? Halo Infinite is also in multiplayer, oh, that's true. so it's like this is a year where they've got a little bit more stiff competition from yeah. the outside. Um, and I wonder if they factor that. I, d- I wonder if Activision actually factors that sort of like competition competition because yeah. it seems like they're so blind to many things that they go like, we make Call of Duty, Call of Duty, best game ever. They're only Call of Duty. And then they just sell Call of Duty games. I have no idea. Uh-huh. All I know is that, I mean, like the thing is that, again, just to go back and reiterate this because I keep having to remind myself because it's a very weird situation. At this point, Activision Blizzard like only makes Call of Duty. Like yeah. the only other thing that came out was Diablo 2 remastered from Blizzard. Um and like there's not very many other Blizzard products on the horizon. Like Overwatch 2 got pushed back, yeah. like Diablo 4 got pushed back, uh Diablo Immortal on the phones isn't even out. Like there's that as a revenue generator. Yeah. That's still in like beta on phones. I actually signed up for the beta because I read an article that was like, this game's actually pretty fun. I was like, I don't know, I'll give it a shot. Um so yeah, it's one of those weird things where like they've consolidated everything into their biggest moneymaker, but that also means that all the eggs are now one in, basket. In that basket. Yeah. And especially with Blizzard losing a lot of the their staff either from people getting let go or people just straight up leaving it means that now the development on any new blizzard products is going to have an even longer yeah. because they have to reorganize teams they have to bring in new leads they have to get the production back up you know new producers look at it and say okay well i'm axing that whole thing we have to redo the first four levels or whatever yeah so like there's a lot of shakeup on this other side that could be used to bolster call of duty that now if call of duty stumbles it's like well that's a problem yeah. that's a really serious problem so who knows um i don't know but call of duty is not the only uh game that is having a problem battlefield 2042 launched and apparently um it's fucking dreadful. Really? Uh, well, define one, dreadful. So, I've got I, I have three examples of dreadful. Uh, the first is that apparently the bullet spread is so wide in 2042 that people just like can't hit the thing that they're aiming I mean, at. Holy shit! Yeah. Like like if there's any distance at all, like I actually tried playing a little bit of it on uh, one of my consoles, and it was like I kind of felt that. Like I would aim, I would line it up, like I do in a first person shooter. Yeah. And there was a bots that I was shooting at, and I felt like I just couldn't hit them. Like I just couldn't hit the bots. Yeah. Um. And there's That's some so weird videos online in of your this shooting going around. game. Yeah. You couldn't figure out the shooting. Yeah. And it's just well, it's just it's like it's so because that satisfaction of like. Like aiming and shooting and hitting like exactly on target Mm -hmm. is the whole point of playing like a first person shooter. Yeah. Especially one like a battlefield or like a Call of Duty. So you don't have that good feel when you're shooting. Yeah. Like uh, nobody pray and sprays in these games. Yeah. I mean, the L2 R2, man, that's like what you're there for. Especially this one. We're looking at these like uh, Reddit videos where it's just like really like standing still aiming firing and you could see these tracer shots just going all around yeah. the target like none of them are hitting them so that's a problem yeah apparently like if you're not standing even if you're standing perfectly still which like movement also ups that value even more that's so crazy. it's very difficult to move and shoot at the same time yeah so that's one uh-huh 
uh, numero dos is apparently the hitboxes on characters are vastly different. So Battlefield 2042, I haven't played that much of it yet to find out, but they've got like different kind of, it's got a hero shooter element to it of having different characters with different um, like abilities. Uh And apparently like you can see online some people doing tests where like um, they're shooting around certain characters and like some characters have a much larger hitbox than other characters. Yeah. Where like for some characters, their hitbox literally goes outside of them to the point where even if you're shooting to the side air next to them, yeah, you're still hitting them. And then some characters have hitboxes so small, like you can see from here within their like body. (laughs) Yeah. Even though you're pointing within their body, it's not hitting them, which again, makes a game like this feel incredibly unpleasant to play. Yeah. Uh, because it's just like, w- oh, wait a minute, I'm doing everything right and I'm failing. Yeah. Like, why? Also, this, like, these tests that these are just, like, players fucking around with. Yeah. It looks like what QA should have been doing. Right. So where the fuck was their QA? Because this is, like, standard QA. The Knowing the hitboxes of those characters and the the bullet spray like that's all seems real basic to me yeah well uh, uh, the only thing i could say in defense of qa is that a lot of times qa will find things like this and then they don't get fixed yeah i just i have a lot of as as xqa i have a lot of respect for like hey man i told you about this six, six months, months ago yeah, yeah, yeah. and like I, it's gonna be shit and they're just like we don't have time for that and it's like but it's gonna make the game shit if you do it like this yeah. uh, part of it also is probably the fact that they're using um EA's Frostbite engine and I feel like they could maybe be cutting corners of just like well we know how Frostbite works we've used it on the last like six fucking Battlefield games like we don't need to tune every little thing we're just going to use the values because we know what they are and then like some shit got messed up and that actually would be not not an incomprehensible thing because I promised you three Uh and the third thing is that uh, Battlefield 2042 has a thing like in Crisis where uh, when you're out on the battlefield, if you hold down a button, it brings up your gun and you can literally like, change like the sight attachment on the fly or mm-hmm. like barrels or, or, or magazines or whatever. Apparently, there are a bunch of them that are just fucking wrong. Like, uh, like in one of the rifles, there's a, a shortened barrel which says that, uh, which the description of it says it will up the rate of fire. Mm-hmm. But what it actually does is it lowers the rate of fire from 450 to 400. What the fuck? Like, there's one, there's this other one. This is all done with the V car marksman rifle, where it's like the standard issue magazine is 15 rounds, mm-hmm. the close combat magazine is 48 rounds, and the drum magazine is 30 rounds. So, like, the <laughs> one that's supposed to have the most yeah, has- does not have the most. Um, there's Did also, they rush this game? I, I mean, it, it appears, yes. It appears yeah. very much yes. Uh, also, there's another, this is from Reddit, another user talking about the AK-24 assault rifle that has a muzzle brake, which is supposed to like reduce the amount of recoil that you get, which apparently appears to make it worse. God damn. So like, there's all kinds of shit in here. Like, Add those three things that I just said together and what you... Com- That's an unplayable game. What you come out with is, a, is an online shooter where like because of all of these different things it doesn't feel good to shoot yeah right like you're trying to use muzzle brake and suddenly this is way worse and like already the shots are going all over the place and yeah. i can't fucking hit this guy because their hitbox is super tiny yeah. and so suddenly you're just like well what the hell like this is no good yeah i don't want any of this so apparently uh i i didn't actually see any stories about them talking about seeing any of this stuff god i hope they are though but it's kind of amazing especially again like you know it's a lot of companies but they had problems with covid working from home yeah. transitioning to remote work etc etc and you know we saw with cyberpunk 2077 there are some companies that like they they make a uh they put out a date when the thing's going to happen and they're willing to put out something broken just to hit that date because they've got pre-orders and they know they'll get a lot of backlash yeah they want to hit the holiday season where kids are like i want battlefield yeah but like i need to do some more testing on it because i just tried it out on the playstation 5 Mm -hmm. but like i again i was just playing against bots and it felt like dog shit. Yeah. Like they were shooting me just fine and I could not 
get kills on them. And like, you know, guys, everybody knows Jeff's not that great at video games, but they were what? bots. They were bots for God's sake. I could kill bots. I could kill a bot or two. <laughs> like, you know, I wasn't I wasn't going up against fucking ninja. Yeah. Right. Like I was just trying to shoot dumb AIs. Um so yeah, that explains a lot. So if you bought Battlefield 2042 and you're like, why does this suck so much? Yeah, there's the three reasons at least. Yep. If not more. If not more. Go to the subreddit and you'll find out. Speaking of things with the number three that suck, let's talk about Grand Theft Auto Trilogy. <laughs> so last week, Grand Theft Auto, I don't know how much you saw about this, but the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy was literally removed from the PC uh, because they quote unquote left a lot of files in and it was amazing. Oh. Um, like the music that they didn't have license for, those Wait. songs were in the installation files. They just were not triggered in the radio stations. Oh. All the code for hot coffee was still in the oh, game. Oh, yeah, I did see that, yeah. Um, yeah, the script that Dan Hauser wrote with, like, notations internally of, like, what should be changed was in the game files huh. for some reason. That's a weird thing to have in the game files, to be yep. honest. So they turned off the, the Grand Theft Auto launcher because they have to have a fucking launcher, yeah. uh, which meant that Red Dead and, and Grand Theft Auto Five didn't work anymore online. Wow. After a couple of days, they brought that back, but the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy was not back. Well, this week, they did bring it back, and they have relisted it um, without any of that stuff left. So if you bought the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy remaster... Uh, you can play it again. Congratulations. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I, I kind of wish that that was all I had to say about Grand Theft Auto this oh, week. Oh, it's not? You have more? I have a trilogy of stories oh. about Grand Theft Auto. Part two, we'll call this, uh, we'll call this new story Vice City, <laughs> um, is an announcement that uh, <laughs> modders have started to try to fix the Grand Theft Auto. Didn't we talk about that when we played um, Vice City? Did we play Vice City? San no, Andreas. we played San Andreas. Um, where we were like, well, because it's going to be on the PC, it's gonna people are going to mod it and Hopefully. they're going to probably make it. Yes. Yeah. The first thing that they're trying to do is fix the rain, which the rain, I don't know if you've seen what the rain looks like in Grand Theft Auto Trilogy. Uh, I wonder if I can find a, a video of it real fast here. Um, uh, but it was like, Okay, so let's see. GTA remaster. Rain. Rain. Um, wait, is that from? Is that from last week? Where I can actually show you the tweet. Um, ah, son of a bitch. Um, anyway, the rain in the Grand Theft Auto remaster was basically like it was. You know, you, to make rain, you're going to take a bunch of slivers and you're going to have them go across the screen. Right. right? Yeah. Um, but the rain was the drops were white. Um, yeah. So like what you ended up with was like just a screen full of static. static. Yeah, that like, looks awful. And when it, the rain was heavy, it looked like garbage, yeah. like really, really bad. Um, so modders are already looking to. Um, are already looking to fix that by basically making it semi-transparent like you would expect from like it should be yeah. water yeah from the sky you know <laughs> maybe it wasn't water that was just falling from the sky Ooh. <laughs> so yeah they're also basically modders are already up trying to trying to go back and fix everything basically <laughs> because nobody has any i mean there's also a lot of other stuff there's a lot of character models that have ended up looking like really weird and fucked up yeah um so hopefully, I mean, we were having issues playing it because the it was hurting our eyes. Yeah, it because was because it was very like flat and weird, and it was just weird. Yeah, yeah it, it just was... it, it felt like just not quite right. Basically, it's like the uncanny valley of a video game. Yeah, basically, what what's happened here is that um, everybody can tell that they ran the entire game through AI, mm -hmm. and that the they just then were like, okay. That's a date and let's put it out, yeah. right? Because there's like uh, th one of the things is there's like a guitar store in Grand Theft Auto 3 that says like guitar wank and like the words on it say guitar hank now <laughs> and it'd be like um, air guitar rooms available and it says AR guitar rooms available. Like there's a picture of, a, of one of the characters that has 
um, like a number on the back of his jersey, mm-hmm. and the number you can see like that the model has the previous number, but it's just been colored in and then like spray painted over. It's like they have a seven, but then oh, there's like a nine back there. Weird. Yeah. Somebody in the Discord uh, showed a screenshot where there's like um, it's like a donut shop. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, GTA donut uh where it's called like something nuts donuts yeah um let me see if i can find it brown ring donuts is that what it is rusty's brown ring donuts oh lord um maybe that's not it anyway it was basically i don't think this is the same thing anyway it was like a donut and then beside it was like a nut like a like a hexagonal nut yeah and then that nut was made into a circle in the remaster, thus destroying the joke yeah. about the nuts. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds about right. So, yeah, um, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a shit show, kind of a total shit show. And maybe someday, um, like, here's uh, one of the characters that got changed to this from the original. Uh-huh. And this is like the modded version. Anyway, horrible shit. Um, but a gift for modders. Here, yes. you guys do it. Well, maybe, because I don't know if you know, but Rockstar shut down a bunch of mods. They DMCA'd a whole shitload of mods before this came out, because I'm sure that they saw this as basically like, there were all these mods to beautify the old games, mm-hmm. and they think that they probably looked at that, and they were like, well, we're doing that. Uh, get rid of them, essentially. Well, there was actually... <laughs> but were you doing it? Were you doing it? The uh, at the end of the day, th- th- so four of the modders that were in a group that got their mod taken down, they pushed back and were like, "We'll see you in court because we reverse engineered the game. We didn't hack open the files. Yeah. We literally reverse engineered the game. So everything we've done." is legit like yeah. this is legal this is taking something that i own and altering it in a way where i haven't broken any encryption i haven't like done anything nefarious i took your thing and then i reverse engineered it i you know yeah. like what i i uh, you know i painted this lamp and so the lamp company sued me for yeah you know and it's like well you can't do that um so this group is uh they all uh, so many things to keep track of in my thing um the developers, let's see, uh, they made Re3 and ReVC. Um, they basically issued a statement through their lawyer basically saying like, yeah, we're going to court. We're going to, we'll see you in court. We're going to fight this thing because we put in a bunch of work and then you basically were just like, nope, we're yeah. taking it away. And then it, I guess I think that it would be different if like what they put out was good, but what they put out was not good really so well what rockstar put out is, is oh obviously i thought not you were good. saying like the modders put out something shitty and it's like why are you fighting <laughs> <laughs> yeah no the, no the modern stuff looks pretty good i mean yeah. it's like sharper you know um so yeah hopefully i wish them the best i do too yeah, yeah. rockstar kind of sucks right now so it sucks to suck. uh let's see another thing that sucks is drift joy con drift on the nintendo yeah uh there was an interview where doug bowser came out and basically said that they're continuing to work on making sure that joy con drift is not a thing yeah uh this is a little weird to me considering it's been like five years since the switch came out that they're still Drifting. apparently they did some updates that were rolled into the new switches and the oled switch that's supposed to address it I've never had a problem with drift uh, in my Joy Cons, but I have had problem with drift in my Pro Controller. It oh. required me to like take it apart and and fix it. Yeah. Essentially, um, we've not had any issues with ours. And you use your Switch a lot more than I do, so yeah. Um, but it's good to see. We that do use our two Switches more than <laughs> anyone else. Do you ever do you ever just like hold half of one? You like put I'm just them like together. trying to play them like one yeah. giant Switch. Yeah. Or like stack them. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's good to hear. Um, yeah. Uh, from there, we had we're getting to the trailers. We actually had like a big Nintendo Switch announcement where Switch and Riot Forge uh, games came out and announced. I think it's four things. So this is really weird mm-hmm. because um, I, I told you you didn't have to watch this because it's pretty long. I started watching it and then I started skipping through and I was like. I don't understand what anything's being said. <laughs> okay. So Riot Games is the maker of League of Legends. Uh-huh. 
And they decided a little while back that they wanted to diversify. There's actually apparently a pretty good Netflix show called Arcane or something like that that came out. It's coming out uh, in pieces that set. Basically, what they wanted to do is they wanted to take their MOBA, because it's League of Legends is a MOBA, mm-hmm. and they wanted to expand it into multimedia, right? Yeah. So they created this arm of Riot called Riot Forge that then went out and got a bunch of indie developers, and they basically went to them and they were like, how would you like to make a single-player game for characters in the League of Legends universe yeah. to expand this and, and stretch it out a little bit. And so this is kind of the first batch of this. Um, and they had um, four, I believe, uh, things. So they had Tequila Works, which um, made... I remember they made a zombie game that I really didn't like very much mm-hmm. a long time ago, but they made a bunch of VR games. Uh, the one thing that they made that I really liked was P- Poor Tequila Works. They made a Google Stadia exclusive game called Guilt that I will never stop talking about. It's like uh, it's like an adolescent Silent Hill about this young girl who goes into this town full of monsters to try to find her stepsister. Mm-hmm. Michael and I played it when I got Stadia because it was like, this is a Stadia exclusive. You can't play it anywhere else. I beat that motherfucker because it was just like, it's like a Silent Hill game, but it's snappy. It's got good mechanics. It's all... Yeah. And it's got nice graphics. Someday, I might actually... I don't know. I have to ask the people... Like, I'd love to do a full sequential of it because it was really fun and interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's not that long either. But anyway, they're making one. Uh, I need to make sure I get everybody's names right. Called, um, uh, which one was this? Uh, Song of Nunu, which is like a little kid with a big, like, Yeti. Yeah. And they're kind of having a little adventure. Super cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is my least favorite type of uh, game thing where there's a lot of developers talking about like what they think about their own game. Yeah, um, I think we fucking revolutionized. Bo-ba-da-bo-bo-bo. But yeah, it seems like it's like, a, you know, the kid can kind of ride on top of this big Sasquatch. There's kind of a thing where you can play music for him. It's a very cute kind of like platformer adventure type of game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, it's funny because I, I wasn't thinking that much about this, but then after I saw this trailer, I went and looked up and found they made that guilt game that I really liked. So mm-hmm. I might be uh, might be in on this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks cute. Like, it looks like a good little adventure game. Yeah. They also made the, uh, the Sexy Brutale. I don't know if you and I played that, where it was like this weird thing where it was like a time loop with mm-hmm. these kind of like little characters and like little dioramas that you'd, uh, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, who knows? I block out everything we record, so. That's probably for the best. I mean, that's probably the It's the only way I've been able to survive this long. So yeah, that's coming in 2022. Nice. Uh, from there, it was, uh, and I don't know the name of any of these characters, so I apologize. Uh, Hextech Mayhem, which is this kind of little, like, I don't know, little stitch explosion guy cat uh look like genki from um saints row oh yeah a little bit a little bit but this appears to be one of those like runner style games like it's literally a music uh rhythm oh, game okay yeah where you have to input stuff and then he's like kind of running and exploding stuff as you as you put in different like up and down and kind of jump inputs and stuff yeah it's kind of a good idea i'm a big fan of those games because the runner games were really good like I think you and I played the the Bubsy one that they made that was not yeah, bad. Like yeah. after we played the one that I hated, <laughs> after uh, we played the ones that I hated, <laughs> aka all of the rest of I them. I was gonna say like that's not specific enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. From there, uh, we moved on to this one is probably the one that I was least interested in. Um, oh, and that one, uh, that game actually came out. Uh, today, like last week. Oh, it's like already they out. Announced it. Yeah, huh. two of these are already out already. Nice, uh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, from there we had uh, just, uh, no, not that one. Uh, Convergence by Double Stallion, um, which is a two D platformer. Uh, that's kind of kind of like kind of hand drawn art. Um. I like that all of these have different looks and they have different feels. Like they're not all. 
apparently when Riot Forge went out, they were basically just like they looked for specific companies who had good resumes. And then they talk in one of the interviews about like, so we called them up and we were just like, which character would you like to make a game for? And yeah. then they looked through all of the huge roster of characters. And they were like, I like this guy. We're going to expand on this part of it. Uh, this character has like time powers. So apparently this is like a 2D side scrolling kind of action game with a lot of hand drawn art. But then it also has like some kind of tracer style rewind uh, stuff. Um, they made a game called Speed Brawl that I haven't played, but this looks pretty good. There's I like the art style, but some of the actual like um, some of the play parts look very just like I don't know, kind of like Meat Boy generic. Of, yeah, I was gonna say a little. Eh. Yeah. Um, so I like I like everything except for the part where they're playing the game. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll be fun, and I'm I'm just. It, it's funny though, like games like that. Sometimes it's the feel that will win you over, yes. unless the like. Well, when you see somebody else play it, it's not fun. But when you play it, you're like, oh yeah, no, I get it. Hundred percent. That was coming in 2022. Uh, and then this last one, we knew that this was happening. Uh, but yeah, this was stealth released this week. So Airship Games um, is so when the the company that made the team Vigil, Vigil was the team that made Darksiders. Vigil oh, okay. split into two parts when THQ was dissolved. Mm -hmm. Half of them became Gunfire Games. Gunfire Games made Darksiders Three, Remnant from the Ashes, and some of that stuff. Uh, I'm sorry to throw shade here, but like I feel like the talented side uh, created Airship Syndicate. Airship Syndicate made the Battle Chasers RPG, mm -hmm. uh, and they made that Darksiders Genesis, that top-down shooter with death and war, or war and strife. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was fucking great. Yeah. Uh, so they put out this one. So full hype then? Yes. Uh, this new one called uh, Ruined King. This is going to be on Rage Light right, at some point. I just needed to. It came out out of nowhere. My schedule filled up. My, but I just didn't have room. I'm so sorry. It's probably going to be sometime this week. Yeah. Uh, it's like the main character is a redheaded pirate called like uh, mi mis misbehavior or something oh, like that. God. Like good lord or something silly like yeah. that. And I fucking love it. And then it looks like it's got a very similar system to Battle Chasers, where it's like a kind of traditional RPG, but like Airship Syndicate is so good at like character design and like putting this stuff together, and it just looks fantastic. Yeah. There's even part of the montage where they show like kind of when you're not in combat that there's going to be some like puzzle solving and platforming and stuff that yeah. happens and the whole thing just looks fucking right up my alley like, yeah it does um uh, so i was really happy i was really happy and then this came out and it didn't just come out for i feel like um battle chasers originally or no darksiders genesis was originally like a pc game that was exclusive for a little while i think it was because it was on epic mm -hmm. uh but this came out on all the consoles it's on playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox xbox series x pc switch whole nine yards huh. like um and it came out the same day that they did this and so i couldn't be happier about this i'm they keep they keep putting out like i have my schedule full of games like some of the games that we've skipped, you know, we've yeah. played Forza Horizon, Riders Republic came out. Like, there's games that I want to play on the channel, and like, no, Miss Fortune, that's her name. <laughs> she's a pirate. <laughs> um, there's stuff I want to play, and then they just keep announcing release dates for more stuff yeah, or still just... put stuff out. Like, fuck, man. Like, okay, cool. Kind of funny. If this was summer, mm -hmm. this game would have two parts and a Patreon bonus, but I think it's only going to get one part. Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or you're going to play it once and be like, fuck, we're going to play another part. We're going to play it forever. I don't know. I'm still thinking about going Ooh, back. I love that monster, that boss fight. That big monster. That yeah, was it looks awesome. The side. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is that I think that this is the side of the company that Joe Madera was with mm -hmm. and so i feel like if if he's not involved that his solid style has infiltrated yeah. the developers and the, the the artists in the side of the company because yeah, so, awesome. everything looks just fucking great like great um yeah so i'm all i'm down 100 percent. i'm all there down can't wait clown, baby. yep so yes four trailers for the price of one uh -huh. um from there 
today, I, this actually wasn't originally on the list, but today uh, they let the cat out of the bag. Uh, this has been a poorly kept secret for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Multiverses finally got a, a full trailer. So um, this was something that got leaked mm -hmm. and then got confirmed. And then I think that they slapped this together. This is Warner Brothers Smash. Yeah. Um, but unlike Nickelodeon Smash, this is kind of interesting because it's like you got Adventure Time, you have Batman, fucking Arya Stark from Game of Thrones is in there, like uh, Shaggy, Steven Universe, like it's Bugs Bunny, uh, a <sighs> lot of stuff going on in here. Yeah. Uh, We're getting dangerously close to Ready Player One, I think. <laughs> well, you know, Zuck's building the multiverse, right? The God. metaverse or whatever it's yeah. called. Um, this is a very basic thing. I, I like the one thing that we hadn't seen so far was any of the the art in action. Yeah. I like the fact that they seem like they're trying to stay. They're not trying to make them all look like they're from the same universe. Yeah. Like they're keeping the individual art design for each one. Yeah. And then like Batman kind of has a Batman, the animated series look, but, but even Batman and Superman, they, they kind of have that Paul Dini look, but then Harley Quinn kind of looks like where she's from the, Harley Quinn show. Yeah. Um, but it's weird because like the Adventure Time characters and the Steven Universe characters almost look claymated yeah. to me. Yep. I guess because they're trying to make them three-dimensional. So they're... It just... They look kind of <laughs> weird to me. I mean, it's fine, but it just it's just weird. Um, they made a very specific... They threw some very specific shade when they talked about how they had the character voices. Mm-hmm. Nickelodeon's All Star Brawl had no character barks or voices whatsoever. They That's said they're going right. to add that later, oh, yeah. so that was very specifically for that. Um, and Ultra Instinct Shaggy is finally a thing. Uh, oh God, I forgot about that. After all this time, <laughs> <laughs> they fucking, they're like, "Look, what happens if you just lean into the memes?" Yeah, uh, he's like throwing sandwiches and oh, stuff, but they shit. also have him like punching out Superman. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm hoping like I had I had some high hopes for the Nickelodeon one, and I just didn't like the way it played. Yeah, uh, these characters are a little bit more up my alley in the first place with the Superman and the Batman. Yeah, and, and also they have the benefit of watching another company f fuck it up. Yeah, so they can do better. Yes. Which uh, is nice. It's going to be free to play. And then they're going to be adding in, I think, costumes and more characters, characters. to buy and stuff like that. I was going like to say, it's, it looked a little limited. Yeah. Um, so I imagine, yeah, they're going to start just rolling out more Well, characters. there's already, uh, Ubisoft has one called Brawlhalla that's also uh, free to play Smash uh, that they just added stuff to over time. But I don't know. Yeah, it looks good. Like, I, you know, it. again, uh, there's there's got to be a moment when they go in and like, explain the system yeah and that's when we can start making better evaluations but on first blush i mean you know they got uh they got a what's opera doc costume for bugs uh, yeah, and you. I, no, you so know, cute. I i enjoy that yeah i don't know that looks like it'd be a black fucking jesus christ <laughs> uh sorry there's just more shaggy more stuff. ultra instinct shaggy uh, tom and jerry are also in here yeah um, i don't know i mean it looks fun i uh, definitely see the appeal of it yeah. i um they could also end up being being a big thing because of being free to play, right? Yeah. You have to buy Smash. You have to buy Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. Brawlhalla sucks, and nobody wants to play it. Oh so. my god! When Bugs got shot, uh, punched off the edge of the map, or who was it? No, Finn got punched off the edge of the map. But it <laughs> instead of just like an explosion, it was Porky Pig saying, "That's all, folks." Yeah. And that would win me over more than anything that like little detail of like look we could make it exactly like smash mm -hmm. but we can also have fun with the properties that we have yep it just it looks like they're having fun the only thing that's really weird to me out of mm -hmm. everything here is the fucking game of thrones is Arya stark the fucking cold-blooded face switching assassin yeah I th well <laughs> you know uh, and with batman and superman and tom and jerry <laughs> yeah but that's just like your taste right because now they you they've opened it up so you know yeah they can have other live action characters it makes me wonder though i'm trying to think of what other warner brother properties there are well, you know, they've already shown that they're willing to sell Dune to anybody so they could put uh, put some fucking Fremen in there, man. Like, get, get Zendaya in there. Everybody likes Zendaya. They put her in Fortnite, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like, uh, She's barely in Dune, for crying out loud. I mean, they have the entire DC universe 
So yeah, but you don't want to turn it into fucking uh, immortals, right? Like, I'm just trying to think of like what's on what's on Warner Brothers. What's on? Wait, Mortal Kombat. They could add Mortal Kombat characters if they wanted. I like, wonder how weird that would be, though. Like Warner Brothers. Why is wait? Why is Yakko, Wacko, and or Dot not in this? They questions. are the Warner Brothers. They could do that. They Pinky put, they, and the fucking brain. Throw some Tiny Tunes in there. You could throw Freakazoid in there. Oh uh, my God. Yeah. Freakazoid. Yeah, it's got potential as long as it doesn't play like shit. It's got potential. So. Uh, Harry Potter is a Warner Brothers franchise. There you go. Is it not? Throw those fucking wizards in there. Space in Jam, there. LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's the thing is, think of Space Jam. Yeah. Rick and Morty, like. Oh yeah, that's can, what we need. They give. Uh, yeah, it's a good concept. So if they, all right, what is the bottled city of Candor doing in? Themyscira. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, look, no, you're Themyscira right. That's why I'm laughing because it's uh, they were just like throw all the DC shit together. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's what? a DC map, baby. What was in the Bat Cave? Was there other stuff in the Bat Cave that I didn't? It's a Batmobile. It's a Bat Computer. Is there two Batmobiles? Oh, it's There's... Joker on the Bat Computer. Oh, Joker. Draw Joker in there. Yeah. The T Rex. That's my oh. favorite. I always love that Batman has a T Rex in his. Uh... And the giant penny. This is a giant penny. Fuck yeah. So, yeah. No, no, it looks cool. I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. Uh, potential. Let's see. I don't really know. I'm going to have to have Michael come on next week and explain oh. Dragon Ball The Breakers. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, you send me a list of all the things we're going to talk about. Uh -huh. I ignore all the news articles. Yeah. Uh, I try to watch all the trailers. Yeah. I saw Dragon Ball in the title, did not watch the trailer. I was oh. like, not even gonna. Okay. Let me tell you. This is the weirdest shit of all time. Uh -huh. This is an asymmetric multiplayer game like that Friday the 13th game where one person plays as the big like monster. Yeah. And everybody else plays as like the citizens of the town trying to get away from the monster. Like. So you're not even playing a character like a named character you're just like i don't i don't know it's like there's like this i don't know if these are named characters like a pig guy and there's yeah. like a, there's like a lady uh and it's like you can build spaceships and like the monster apparently like it comes and then it like evolves into different forms yeah um and it gets more powerful as time goes on <laughs> michael can you yeah comment and let us know <sighs> yeah it's just very weird, like of all the types of games to make, yeah. an asymmetric third-person multiplayer game was not what I expected you know, from Dragon Ball. You know what I'm liking, though? People are really just like, you know what, fuck it. We're going to just explore doing different things with the like licensed property. Yeah. Just, it's not just a fucking fighting game. This is something totally different. Just give it to somebody and... Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, like I, I don't know. I'm, like, I would never play it because I'm not a Dragon Ball Oop. fan. But like, it's cool. Like, yeah. it's neat to be like, you know, we're just gonna do something different. Good luck. It appears that like the survivors are trying to build like a spaceship to leave, and that the monster is trying to eat the survivors to uh, evolve. evolve. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, maybe this will be the time that asymmetric multiplayer finally is a thing that people enjoy. Uh, but I, to be honest, a lot of the previous Evolve, Friday the 13th, a lot of those games, mm -hmm. the problem was not the game. It was the company that put it out. Yeah. Or they got hamstrung by legal shit. So. Yeah. I mean, because they had their success. Yeah. For sure. Dead by Daylight? No. What was Dead it? by Daylight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, seems what... very popular. Yep. Like, people loved it. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, I followed a bunch of Twitch streamers when it, that shit was a thing. People just have to, they just. I just think it's short lived. Like, I, you know, uh, for some reason, like, Call of Duty and Fortnite have replayability yeah. that these asymmetrical games don't seem to carry with them. Well, I think in Dead by Daylight, they did a good job because they, they hit on the solution, or at the beginning, it was very just like regular. And then they were like, oh, we got the rights to be able to put, like, fucking. Michael Myers or yeah. you know but the Pinhead problem, or the things. problem is if you were creating new content yeah isn't available like eventually you just run out of characters to add and or you know you uh, hiccup in getting licensing for this character or that character or whatever yeah then all of a sudden people won't play like if you're not adding new things people won't play but like yep. Call of Duty you don't have to add new things and people just come back and keep playing for the most part, like you'll bit, get, yeah. I just feel like it's it's less, um, like they do have a group that'll continue to play it, but it's it's a smaller uh, pocket of those customers versus like Fortnite. Yeah, 
No, I get you. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I think know. I could be totally wrong. Y'all could be like, actually. Well, it's funny. I need to, like, again, I need to ask Michael about this because, like, Michael is the Dragon Ball super fan. And so if he's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I never even thought of that. And I cannot fucking wait to play it. Yeah. That's the other thing with this, though, right, is that as a, like, anime fans are are like they are abused they will play anything that just has the word of the anime they like on it you know yeah. it's just like oh well i'm gonna buy that because i like dragon ball you know even if they're not gonna play it they so. should make an asymmetrical power rangers game that'd be pretty cool make everybody have to do a different arm yeah like. <laughs> right like you like the whole point is getting your like zords back together mm -hmm. so that you could attack the monster but and then somebody's just whatever monster fucking rita or whoever is sending out to you like you could easily do that with any like team dynamic i want there to be the one slot for a player that just gets to play as rear repulsa who throws the thing down and says You're like ah! yeah that's what i want to be time for my monster to grow <laughs> <Yeah>. like what <laughs> Is that Jeff from Bracelet? Uh, <laughs> no. After 10,000 years, I'm free. <laughs> uh, let's see. We also had Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> sort yeah. of. Kind uh, of. Sonic the Hedgehog is going to be in Monster Hunter. Um, yeah. There's a dumb outfit for your Monster Hunter guy, and you can turn your Palico into a uh, weird Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it grosses me out. <laughs> it looks weird. It does like, look it's, weird. It's right, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, and the outfit for your character, the outfit for the character isn't that bad. Um, yeah. I like the little, I like the little, the, the tails outfit for the Palamute. It, yeah. Even though I'm not Miles' biggest fan in the world, but I like the Palamutes. So, um, <laughs> I just like the like, little cosplay duo. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. That's my kind of whimsy where they're just like, I don't know, crossover. St why not? I feel like they've got to find some way to sell you shit in this game. And so they're just like, you nerds like Sonic, right? Here, yeah. Sonic. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that actual Sonic really <laughs> is the problem here. It's because he's got this with a dead face. He's it's, got, it's a mascot he, head. Yeah, uh, the dead face. But then it's also got like, it looks like parachute pants body. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Yeah. Some, some about it. Some about it feels wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, how do you feel about, about Voss? about Voss from Far Cry. Oh, he's my absolute favorite and I love him. I mean, he's okay. The definition of insanity. He was better than the actual final boss in That's Far Cry true, 3. Right? I remember everyone being like He's better than Joseph Seed. He's not as good as Pagan Man. Uh Giancarlo Exposito, I'd <laughs> say it's a push with the two of them because he was a good character and then the end of that game fucking sucked wow really yep i'll tell you about it later uh so yeah <laughs> we got a trailer for the voss insanity dlc because they're doing the three different villain dlcs uh, -huh. uh is it weird to that after seeing this i'm less excited for this dlc than i was before no because i thought this trailer was kind of lackluster yeah because it's a well the first thing is it's a roguelike where mm -hmm. you're just repeating stuff um and uh, to me, it seems like a little bit more constrained than Far Cry, which mm -hmm. is not the appeal of Far Cry. Yeah. Like the actual gunplay and action of Far Cry is like, okay. Uh, but the idea that you can jump off the top of a building, open a wingsuit and come down in the middle of a camp, call your fucking wiener dog to come in and, and attack people. Help me, wiener dog. <laughs> uh, like, that's cool. I don't know. Because you and I, we played the Far Cry 5, we played the Moon DLC. Oh, yeah. And it was bad. Yeah. And I did not like it. I like the Vietnam one. I don't know. Some part of me thinks that this whole thing with the villains is just like they've run out of ideas and they're fan, fan wanking because yeah. they know that the villains have you know people who like them. Um, I don't know. I bought the season pass. Maybe we'll check it out, see what happens. Maybe know. single uh single part. Oh yeah, definitely. hundred <laughs> percent. Um yeah. Let's see. From there we got some release date trailers. Heavenly bodies. Oh yeah. Uh I absolutely love this has been on my radar for a long time. Yeah. It's one of those games you're out in space, but you manually control the arms with the left and right <laughs> sticks. Yeah. Uh and it so it's one of those surgeon simulator like 
Fucking it looks stupid. Janky. I really want to be on the video when you play this <laughs> because it looks so stupid that I can't help but love it. Yeah. Uh, you have co-op and you have uh, both uh, uh, single player. Yeah. I like the watering the crops. Uh, <laughs> and it looks like a, a real pain in the dick to do anything yeah which is right where i want to be in video games it's kind of a, it's kind of a cross between surgeon simulator and uh getting over it with bennett foddy oh yeah uh or quap holy uh, shit so uh not just that though but it got a release date of december, december 7th. 7th oh my god they keep putting shit out and fucking <laughs> ah, december's supposed to have no games i mean not that i'm complaining I am you, complaining. You are literally I, complaining. I want to know what this one part of this trailer is where Spears is in a, like a dryer, like a tumble you're dryer. Like, um, Maybe you're supposed to 2001 Space Odyssey run on it. Oh, like a treadmill? Yeah. But, yeah. but it, he got caught. Possibly. Uh, we also got a Steam launch trailer for The Pathless. Uh, this was a PS5 exclusive at launch. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a really fun game. I played about two-thirds of it and then lost interest but yeah um it's pretty fun uh it, it once you get kind of going it's very no i beat this game what the fuck <laughs> do you forget yeah totally forgot um it was it's not that super long but it was pretty good nice. so it's out now on steam yeah it looked cool if you're waiting for it neato toledo yep annapurna interactive uh we got the past within oh yeah this trailer was awesome yeah because it's rusty lake <laughs> i am a big fan of rusty lake is that because the art kind of reminded me we've played rusty lake games right yes we have okay those are those puzzle games with the like sketchy art they well i mean it's like when you look at the guy's screen this art that, yeah, from the that. trailer where it's like a picture of a room yeah i was like we've played this game yes, not not this game specifically but like we've played games by this person they have put or, out uh, company uh like six or seven different games on steam yeah. and i think we've played, we played almost all, all of them yeah uh this new one the past within is like an asymmetric game where one person plays with like a tablet yeah and another person plays like like with a laptop or like in steam or whatever yeah and so you have to communicate between and they've got this really funky trailer that's like a little horror movie yeah <laughs> i love it i love it uh where there's like some flickering lights and like this lady should see something outside and at the very end there's like a big deer man standing outside yeah it's, it's <laughs> um yeah i really want i want to play this game but i swear to god if a deer man kills me because uh-huh. you and i play this game uh-huh then we are no longer friends. Well, you know. I would really question our friendship, Jeff. I'm if, just throwing it out there. If I get murdered, I well, I try my best, Amanda, not for people not to be murdered at my house. It makes it really hard to do. Uh, you say that, uh, but uh, we all know the truth, Jeff. <laughs> Nobody's seen Joe in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is fine. Joe is fine, everybody. Joe is fine. Um, yeah, Rusty Lake is great. This looks great. Yeah, it looks I awesome. Play the hell I'm, of it. I'm into it. Switch. Yep. Oh shit! I have two switches at home. There you go. Steam, Switch, itch.io, Apple, and Google Play. Q2 2022. Because I'm pretty sure all these are on the phone as well. So I think Michael and I played one that was like a weird. You're like waking up and then testing, and it was. They're all kind of point and click adventure yeah, with the yeah. kind of puzzle stuff. But I, for some reason, they they got their difficulty tuned. To a razor's edge where it's like, it's just hard enough. Just when you get frustrated, you go, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. So, yeah. Uh, Love it. And then also, <gasps> we had the yeah. little kitty in the big city. Um, this just looks like a, you know, just kind of like a third person adventure game with a little cat a little walking around. Cat. Yeah. But the cat is amazingly cute. Yeah. They um, really amped up cuteness for it. They're yeah. like giant eyes. Make them green. Make it go. Brrr. Like, uh, <laughs> I want a cat. I want yep. a cat so bad. And there's like a lot of really good animation with mm-hmm. this cat, like pouncing on stuff and going in boxes and doing stupid cat shit. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the game is like, okay, look in, but the cat looks really good. And, you know, that's I mean, enough. the fucking Untitled Goose game really just made its way through by being a goose. So yeah. I feel like 
this cat one will do the same just by being a cute cat, you know? I like this cat being followed by a bunch There's of a little, little ducks. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. It's pretty fun. I like this dog that says, are you a small dog or a big mouse to this cat? <laughs> a cat has a whole bunch, a bunch of, of hats, hats. Including a banana hat. Which hats I on love. cats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's not to like? I'm pretty sure this is going to be very popular yeah. amongst the internet. So, uh, Cats yeah. will do that. Little kitty big city. Uh, we also got a very brief teaser for the Halo TV show coming to Paramount+. Plus. I probably will not be watching this because it will be on Paramount+. No, Plus, Plus, so. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I mean, it looks all right. It's very brief. It just shows Spartan. If you told me it was a fan film, I'd be like, wow, it's a really good looking fan film. Actually, I tell you what, there was a... Uh, there was like a whole, what was it? There was some kind of Halo movie that came out like around when the Xbox One launched when they were pushing the TV thing. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, it was because in the Halo universe, before all the alien shit happens, there was like a, like kind of a civil war that happened. And it was mm -hmm. like the Spartans were originally created to put down the rebellion. Um, and it was kind of set during that. It was pretty good. because Mostly because they got the like, the Spartans are supposed to be like eight feet tall. Yeah, they're and, giant compared yeah. to normal people. Which doesn't always come through when they're fighting like the Arbiter guys or Brutes or things that are even taller than I, them, right? Because uh, I don't experience a lot of Halo. It's always really jarring when you get to a scene where it's like normal person next to yep. uh, Spartan. You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you when Gee, you see I wonder a, which one of these is the main character. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you see one of the uh, the forty k space marines next to like the regular army guys yeah. there, and they're just like fucking nine feet tall. That's hilarious. But I don't know. Streamer twenty twenty two. Show me more. Show me when you got a, a full trailer. Show me when you got a plot. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's wrap it up with some some quick announcements. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy got a patch to add ray tracing across all platforms, which is good. What's really ray tracing? Um, it's a thing where instead of like when there's a light source in the game, mm -hmm. instead of like having to manually do things like if there's a red light, uh, it tracks where that light goes and then like makes it reflect off of like a character model or like it makes shadow. It's basically a light simulator. Uh -huh. And so instead, like previously, games have gotten really good at like putting lights in a scene and then kind of like painting the light into the scene to make it look right. Yeah. Whereas here you can literally have the light and then it makes dynamic shadows and colors and huh. you can literally move the light around. It just makes everything look a little bit like more realistic. Yeah. Um, cool. I wish that this had been there when I played this game. Nah. I'm not playing it again. But if you haven't, Guardians of the Galaxy was pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 came out this week on the Switch. Um, somebody has hacked into the game files and found a little thing that says, like, platforms. And it appears that it might be coming to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC at some point. Oh. This would not be a shock uh, because the Persona games have started to get... Uh, when Persona 4 came out on the PC a little while back, a lot of the stuff has moved to different platforms. Mm -hmm. so. uh, which, you know, if you're looking to buy, if you're looking to play this game, great. Uh, Saints Row reboot got pushed back from February of 2022 to August of 2022. Yeah. Standard, uh, we need more time, we need more polish, we need to do more to make it up to snuff. Uh, I will always wait. Yep. After, I will always wait. I'm sorry, but. After Cyberpunk in the last few years, take your time. I'd rather play a finished game than a broken game. Well, so. even beyond that, like, I hate crunch for developers. Mm -hmm. I It just bothers me that they, like, well, what if we just murder everyone that works for us uh, yep. to get this game out? No, I'd rather just wait. I'll wait a little longer and give me a good game. It's not like there aren't a billion games. Yeah. Yeah. And I like what I see. So, like, I feel like they're going in a decent direction. If it, if it means that it's going to be functional and look good and not have dumb glitches because you rush through it, mm -hmm. then fucking do it. Like, I don't know. Nobody wants, like, everyone's already shitting on Saints Row. So, it's, you know, you're better to wait and put out a good game and prove mm -hmm. them wrong than be like, well, but now we have to rush it out and then it's a bad game and everyone goes, I told you so, and you kill your own franchise. Yep. Yep. I agree. Uh, also, nobody asked, but Six Days in Fallujah has been delayed to 2022. Uh, this was a really controversial game. It was half developed back in the day uh, when they announced that there was a kind of a big group of people that were like, 
uh, that seems like a bad taste. Uh, yeah. No. And so they shut it down. And then over the years, this new studio has picked it up. Um, uh, I don't know what to think about this until it comes out. They had one trailer that was very weird mm-hmm. where they're like supposed to be taking stories from people who were in Iraq, who were in Fallujah because it's based on like, you know, a real event. So turning a real event into a call of duty doesn't seem like a good idea, but also turning it into like a rainbow six doesn't seem like a good idea, but it's supposed to be like randomly right, like, randomized and uh, hear me out. I guess because it's interactive, it's a little different. But like Hollywood's been doing that shit for years where it'll be like, oh, you remember two years ago when this happened? I mean, shit, there was a fucking 9-11 movie. Yeah. There were several 9-11 movies. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'm just I'm just saying like not saying it's in good taste. I'm just saying it's not. They say it's controversial, but like, is it? I think it is because of the interactivity element where you were doing the shooting. Yeah. Um, but I would like to see more. This has had one it had an announcement, one trailer, and nothing. Yeah. So um, I'd be interested. I mean, I'm willing to give it a fair shake. I don't want to like say out yeah, of pocket. I'm no, just saying like but yeah. you're not standing on like space marines blasting aliens solid ground here. Like you, you need to be real careful yeah. with what you do because you could end up in a bad situation. Uh, and then, uh, some um, Pragmata got delayed from 2022 to 2023. So we're even looking further down the list. Pragmata was that PS5 game with the little girl and the space and astronaut and the hologram cat. And then they fly out into space that was in the PlayStation, uh, announcement you you looking at me like you probably don't know I, it's uh, like it's uh, it was this really weird it's not like the tip of my brain everybody oh, thought it was like the i remember that shot okay kojima game but yeah. it's not uh that looks like um you know in, in movies where they like reuse costumes that looks like a dead space helmet oh yeah no i could see it um yeah it was really weird and everybody was like what and apparently uh, part of the announcement was Capcom leadership talking about that this game is being made by a studio of like younger devs. Mm-hmm. So it's being made of just like we kind of said go nuts, like stretch your creativity and see what you can do. I hope it turns out well because everything in this trailer. I mean, it looks really nice. Fucking uh, speaks to me. Um, so, but I this is know. actually uh uh, Kitty in the city. <laughs> <laughs> then, the, then the cat became a hog. Well, there's still that that other PlayStation Five, uh, the cat in the world where the machines have taken over a game. Yeah, I uh, just feel like that one's going to end with the cat dying, and this uh, the cutesy one looks like it's not. And I would rather play the one where the cat lives and has a happy life, and ever, and it ends with like a quirky ukulele song. You know what I mean? I do indeed. Uh, Keenan the Bridge of Spirits has a physical edition that is out. So Ooh. if you're into that, uh, go grab it. That was a good game. Go get it. Everyone I know that played it, or um, and not everyone I know, but like people I follow online um, that played it really enjoyed it. I liked it. Because it's need cute it. as fuck. Yeah, I remember you uh, kind of giving me a little walkthrough of it. Yeah. Because the spirits were so cute, you were like trying to pitch it to me, but I don't want to fucking play stage shit right now. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now I got a few things to wrap it up. Uh, Gucci has a ten thousand dollar <sighs> Xbox and Whoa. Xbox package, uh, and the yeah. Xbox is like the Gucci uh, fucking thing all over. People it. with money buy dumb things. They do. I would buy cool things if I had money. <laughs> give me your money. You ten thousand. Give me ten thousand dollars. I can buy seven thousand better things. I would buy a lot of pillows if I had uh, that <laughs> much. Can you, you imagine? <laughs> I'd buy so many body pillows, and then I would sew them together and make a body pillow snake. Oh, I just make like that in the uh, 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 <laughs> spirited away in that baby's room where it's just all those pillows oh and you God. just jump into it. Yeah, uh, it's a dumb suitcase with the Xbox really um, ugly, oh ugly written on the side. It's an ugly Xbox with the the, the Gucci, Gucci logo shit. Yeah, yeah, and then the controllers have a red and blue stripe on them that is also ugly and stupid looking yeah. and not worth $10,000. And this is like that Supreme shit where it's like, I do not understand why you are spending any money on this. Yeah. This is dumb. Yeah. Like, if you go to buy this they should take your money away from yeah, you it's a test and you fail right yeah. right oh i'm sorry yeah this is a mugging now like yeah. you're gonna give us the money ten thousand i just ten thousand i could pay off the car god damn 
what? It's a fucking. I'm it, so poor. The suitcase is so <laughs> gross looking. Like it would be one thing if it was cool. Yeah. If I looked at it, and I was like, wow, that's cool. But it's not. If you have ten thousand like dollars to spend on like a Gucci xbox are you playing xbox i don't know do you know what i mean like I don't do you know. just want it in your house is this for that one like musician like youtubers or, or like, yeah, like or rappers or something people that like, want to like flex and be uh, like oh hey welcome to my house here's my fucking Gucci. jeffree star or some <laughs> bullshit <laughs> like that holy like, shit you know it would be he would buy that oh my god this whole thing was for jeffree star this uh, entire time they made one uh yeah yeah. God damn it. Fucking Gucci Now I'm Xbox. mad. No, just kidding. <laughs> now you're mad. <laughs> yeah. This whole, this whole podcast this is out, out of order. order. Yeah. Um, well, maybe <laughs> you're so mad you're going to catch on fire like Animal Crossing players are doing. Uh, so here's the thing. Animal Crossing has this new feature where you can shine things. Mm, yeah. Where you can like polish things and then it makes little sparkles come off of them. Apparently the more you do that, it levels up and the top level of that gives you the ability to replace these sparkles with whatever you want. <laughs> and so people have been like... I'm gonna light this place on fire! Flames! Yeah. Or like uh, <laughs> somebody recreated that this is fine. Dog, Dog meme. meme. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, um, some people have used it to make it look like they're being electrocuted. I this love it. This person doing little like butterfly. Oh my and, god, and that's so cute. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just proving that Animal Crossing is uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, it's adorable. Uh, oh, and spooky ghosts for the steam. Uh, you, I don't know how that works. But. I approve. Uh, in other Nintendo news, uh, with the upcoming release of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there's a person named Uma on Twitter that created uh, the Twin Leaf Town, recreated Twin Leaf Town from Pokemon as a little paper craft. Oh, uh, that's cool. Thing. Yeah. You can go and, and check it out. It's a pretty cool thing. I like it. And last but not least, Amanda, I have a story just for you. Just for me. About Demon Slayer. Um uh, but it's a really weird story. Yes. There's a woman, and she is in Japan, and, and yes. she makes the cakes. She makes Demon Slayer cakes. Oh. Uh, is it making specifically Demon Slayer cakes with Demon Slayer characters? Um, and the Demon Slayer logo, uh -huh. and she's selling them on, like, uh, it's sold them through Instagram. <laughs> she has been arrested. Arrested. For copyright infringement on the Demon Slayer. Uh, 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 IP because you can't make Demon Slayer cakes if you don't have a license uh -huh. to make Demon Slayer cakes. Yeah, she was selling them. Japan does not fuck around when it comes to intellectual property rights. Yeah, uh, she made like fifty-seven grand selling Demon Slayer cakes because in like a year. That's like a full salary. Yeah. Um. Apparently, though, she's going to be charged like, like. Uh, what they said that they're gonna fine her like uh like a hundred bucks a cake or something like that holy like, shit uh there's apparently like an already licensed demon slayer like an already licensed bakery in japan uh, that is licensed to see, do demon and slayer that's stuff kind of the reason why i think japan is like that because they do do officially licensed things like this <laughs> you said doo -doo. Doo -doo. i did indeed <laughs> um you know they they will have like a straight up bakery that does officially licensed stuff and right where i feel like in america we don't uh we care well we love that kind of um uh like capitalism <laughs> of like sell an item in and bakery do a the you know a fucking cafe with a, a cappuccino that you get that's a specifically licensed you know what i mean yeah. but like japan will do that and it's not a, a thing but like here they won't do it so people kind of get away with like making a cookie of as long as it's not disney uh, you make it like a cookie of a character from yes yeah but japan is like no we have official cookies well like you know you can go to you can go to heb our local like uh uh, uh grocery, grocery store, store and you can be like i want an elsa cake and like you can get like an elsa, elsa cake, cake. Yeah, no like, you don't have to go to the fucking disney licensed bakery to get an elsa cake yeah uh Yep. But if there was a Disney licensed bakery. Apparently, though, like not just that. This is the one that I thought was really funny, though. Is there's a, this was a while back. This was in uh, uh, March, April, May, June, July, August or something like that. Um, 
where like this was a hoodie with just the green and black checker pattern from the main character's yeah. outfit that was like a knockoff that was like shut down. <laughs> wow, that's really specific because like green and black checkered is not enough to me to be I guess it can be, but like I don't know. Yeah. What I if don't... they were just really ska and like the color green, you I don't know? know? It's weird. Just I can't think... like ska now. Is <laughs> that what say... Japan's telling me? I can't like ska. That's right. Japan says <laughs> ska is now illegal. <laughs> All right. And that's it. Another podcast. Huzzah, we made it. We did. We made it to the end. Uh, this is, this is, is I good? think I need to go lay down. On 7,000 pillows? On 7,000. I need to go lay down on my $10,000 <laughs> Gucci pillow. <laughs> they better give me a fucking hand job for 10,000. All right. I'm done. We're done. We're done here. This is, this is the end. This is the end podcast.